WQFM and HD Pasadena, Los Angeles, Orange County. This is the world famous K Rock. All right, here we go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Unreal. 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 That's that's the one I'm wanting. Yeah, here we go. How long were we sitting here? Just doing. Work for the show, talk. bagel talk, yeah. making bagels, talking bagels. Guys, I was very focused you on You even told me, hey, we're on in two minutes. So I, I was like, Jesus, great. Man. I know, but we're focused on the biggest news story. And then you put in that song, that stupid song. I mean, you're the single person that's keeping Blur, giving money to Blur. I love it. It gets me in a hype. It's hype, <laughs> hype. Every morning, that song hypes me up. we got to kill another really? minute. Really? There's other the sh- two-minute songs, though. You no, know? no other two-minute songs. He only likes music in terms of song length. That's he it. doesn't oh. like anything about the songs. The the, yeah. Shorter the song, right. the better, as per usual. Yeah. That's why the weekend song is a perfect song. It's a minute 30. <laughs> they should go shorter than that. Good morning. How but goes what it? What happened before, 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 that, uh, before you came on the air? What were you wrestling with? I, well, the intro was playing, and then... I got I tripped over my headphones. <laughs> uh, to be honest, Omar, I don't want to... The best I part is... I heard all kinds of racket. I'm like, what is happening I over fell, there? I fell. Look, this job is not very athletic, clearly. I he was had ra- to run two feet over to his backpack. I was racing really in my bag, thing. and then the wires were all tangled, and then I Are tripped. Are you all sweaty now? I, I do need to take a break. <laughs> uh, I'm winded. <laughs> Uh, this is why I can't go out there in the week. I, I have a strict no going out there in the week policy, and then every once in a while, I like oh, oh you come. went to the Lakers. Yeah, game, I went right? to the Lakers game, and I just got all emotional at the Kobe statue for a little bit. Oh, you saw it in person? Beautiful. I didn't see one typo there, and I looked over <laughs> that that plaque many times. It looked all spelled 100 percent correct to me, but uh, it's pretty impressive in person. Really? Yeah, it, it does feel. I feel like the pictures and video are easy to criticize, you yes. know. But then when you go and see it in person, I bet you do kind of standing catch around your and just looking at other people, looking at it too. There is a moment. I would imagine that's what like religious people feel when they go and they visit these, you know, uh, holy sites. That's how it felt. I, I think that was how it would feel. You traveled all the way to you traveled crypto. all the way off the 101 <laughs> to Figueroa. I can't find a typo. You're that's kissing like. the ground. And it was a beautiful uh, thing, and then uh, did the Lakers win? I don't know. I left in the third quarter. <laughs> but I think they did. They were winning. I mean, the Hawks are terrible. So, I listen, the biggest story of the day by far is this one. And I don't know how we're not talking about it more. The days of students eating flaming Hot Cheetos on a California school campus may be numbered. State lawmakers in the Assembly are considering a new bill that would ban public schools from serving food products that contain artificial dyes. That would include popular Cheeto snacks with its signature yellow and red colors. The proposed ban is part of the campaign to provide healthier foods in California school cafeterias. If I was in school right now and this was going on, this would be my only goal would be to reverse this from happening. Flaming out Cheetos when you're in school, I don't think there's anything more important. Well, I mean, you hate school when you're in school, right? So there's only a few things. It's sort of like you you feel like you're in prison. You get like, you, once you get a honey bun, that's like the highlight of your day, right? You do everything with the honey bun. So when you're in school. Eat it, F it, you know, all the I things. remember the best part of my day was going to the vending machine and just picking out one thing to just munch on other than the, the crappy lunch that they right. would give us. Right. And my mom would o- only have like healthy, you know, try to have healthy stuff at home. So like the only, the only chance I ever got to get like a flaming Hot Cheeto is at school. Yeah, so, like, that was where my, you know, my real world, my, my, my whole world opened up to me when you would get a vending machine with some choices. And because when you're a kid, everything that's even a little bit, uh, you know, spicy or sour, it becomes a it's challenge. Like a, yes, totally. Like, like, so there was, there was a real rite of passage. And the idea that they would be getting away of the Flaming Hot Cheetos in schools in California is a goddamn shame is what it is. Well, and I also feel like you don't get a lot of years of your life where you truly do not care about what you eat. Yeah. And what you put in your body. Not thinking calories. Nope, not thinking calories. You're not thinking chemicals. Yeah, You're not thinking about any of it. Your fingers, not thinking about that for a change No, you're just thinking of everything delicious is what I want in my mouth at any given time. So here's what the kids had to say about this ban. In California school cafeterias. What do we want? Chocolate When do we want it? So the kids, are, Sweet the kids are very Wait, wait, wait. Why are they chanting ch- ch- chocolate milk? Because they're, they're stupid and they can't figure it out. <laughs> oh. the, the oh, is that what happened or somebody went to the Laker game last night? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's both right. We got a good show planned for you. We'll get you into Green Day today, later. It's K Rock. Klein Alley. Yeah, yeah. Klein Alley Show. K R O Q, the world famous K Rock. K Rock. K Rock. We got a good one planned for you today. And forget about everything we have in store for you. Yesterday it was announced at noon with Nicole Alvarez that Green Day will be doing a little show at the House of Blues Anaheim tonight. 
This isn't one of those things where we tell you, hey, good news, you'll get some tickets in seven months, we'll give you a call. This is happening today. I love that. I love the immediate gratification. Hey, immediate. here's the announcement, and tomorrow's the show. So here's what you need to do if you would like to get in, because we have lots of tickets to give you to go to this thing tonight. And yeah, maybe you've seen Green Day before, maybe you never have. But if you have seen Green Day, it was probably in a big, massive venue where you were, I don't know, 50, 100, 200 rows back. Here you'll be in the House of Blues, small little place. As yeah, someone who, insane. As someone who just got a chance to see Weezer in a small... I don't even know. Oh, Jake, how many people does that lodge room hold? It felt like Troubadour small. So, yeah, it is maybe slightly bigger than a troubadour. Right, I don't need the specifics. <laughs> Whatever. Just... You just ask for right, specifics. It's, fine. It's, it's anyway, Don't the give po- me your numbers, nerd. Yeah, 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 so calm down. Just people. answer the question. I'm not looking for a math equation here. It's just saying it's a small little venue, a big band, and we'll uh, get you troubadour in. Troubadour times 2.15469. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, nerd. Six nine. So anyway, you get uh, some tickets every hour. All you got to do is listen to the show intently this morning because at the end of every hour, there will be one question which we are calling an American Idiot Test. Any idiot could solve this. It's one question about something that happened the previous hour on the show. All you have to do is listen. I could not. I could not (laughs) solve it, but everyone else probably could. And so you just listen every hour, and the last thing we do at the end of ADD News every hour is give you one question about the last hour you heard. First person through with the right answer, you're getting tickets to go see Green Day. That's it. Yeah. American so, Idiot Test. You just every have to hour. challenge yourself not to tune out. That's the hardest yeah. part. That is, and we know how you feel about Green Day, right? Green Day may be the greatest trio since Snap Crackle Pop. Okay. God damn it. Why are you finding these old clips? Was that from your TV appearance? That was, it was. Uh, that it was, was from that show. I spent nine uh, hours nine hours doing uh, interviews for Access TV, and I think of all the nine hours they used that one four-second yeah. clip. Yep. If we ever chat with Green Day again, we have to make sure totally. you play that. that Would the, you agree with this? Green Day may be the greatest trio since Snap, Crackle, Pop. <laughs> Stand by it. Stand by that statement. What are some other great serial trios? Uh, that's all I got. That's all I got. That Lodge room holds 500 people. Oh, shut up, Jake. We're way past that. It's the real House of Blues over there. (laughs) We got uh, on the show for you today, March Sadness is finally here. At some point in your life, you have been forced to (laughs) make yourself and eat a terribly sad meal. Oh, Oh my God. I feel like I've eaten so many over the last year. Well, when Allie was alone, when her wife left her alone all uh, in her house, Allie was eating... Like I saltine ate, packets and mustard. I or just something. ate mustard yeah, by crazy. itself. Yeah, spoonfuls of mustard. I mean, I, good luck topping that sad meal. I so think we'll, I can top my own sad meal. We'll hear your uh, stories from March Sadness, the saddest meal you've ever made yourself. We'll get into that later. We got old people's secrets to get to. Red flags aplenty, clickbait. And um, I can't believe it. But as we mentioned, in addition to the uh, Green Day access, which we got for you, we will get someone else on that standby boarding list to go see Weezer in England. Here are the details for that trip. We got it coming up later this morning, right here. K-Rock. The world famous K Rock. Klein Alley Show. K Rock Q. Every morning, right around this time on K Rock, chance for you to get $100 richer. Alley's money up for grabs. She puts money where her mouth is, and her mouth's been lots of places. Yeah. If you would like in, hey, I'm just saying facts here. Well, and I did pay out yesterday. Five. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she paid the people. So today, let's go ahead and let that losing streak continue. Klein's car defiled by Jake's pew pews. Let's find out if Allie knows the news. That's right. That sure is a thinker. Pew pew. Oh, my. All right. Thank you for the DIY theme songs. Always appreciate them. You can leave them on that goat line. It's there for you at 844-956-GOAT. You know, $100 up for grabs. Somebody had uh, pointed out one time that, you know how Jake always says, pew, pew, like he's the audio sniper. Right. If, he, if he was a true audio sniper, he would only need one pew. Right. He wouldn't need to. And it would have been a recording. <laughs> oh, man. Devil tap. No. See, that's the problem. <laughs> I play Halo. I know. Not an audio <laughs> sniper. <laughs> hey, Frank in East L.A., welcome to K-Rock this morning. How goes it? Sweet dibs, guys. Good morning. Sweet dibs. dibs. I hope you win 100 bucks of Allie's money. Okay, I'll Hopefully, go. you were paying attention to what's been going on in the world. She's about to leave the studio, sequester herself. If you're listening and want to play along, and you do better than Allie most mornings, well, then hopefully tomorrow you get through so you can get the $100. Your round of Allie Knows the News starts now. Allie Knows the News. This strange sight was seen by many in L.A. sky last night, prompting a huge search of aliens and or UFOs. What were people looking at in the skies over Southern California last night? Uh, A flying saucer. Question number two. This current Laker is set to release a weekly podcast. LeBron. Question three. To celebrate its 20th Baja-versary, 
Mountain Dew is releasing two new flavors. Name one of them. Uh, Cherry Lime. Question number four. Because of an accounting error, this California NFL team will have to forfeit a draft pick. Pass. I don't know that one. And finally, Supreme Court is hearing arguments in Murthy versus Missouri, which is about what topic? This is a big uh, Supreme Court battle, but it's about what topic are they arguing? Uh, Pharmacy. Pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals. All right. Let's write it down. Let's score it together. You learn a thing or two. You may get $100 richer in the process. These are all actual questions about the news. Allie's back into the studio now. She's battling Frank. Tomorrow, hopefully, you'll have a chance to win 100 bucks of Allie's money. Here we go, Allie. If you're just joining us this morning and you don't care about $100, but you want those Green Day tickets to see them tonight at the House of Blues Anaheim, I hope you listen to every little thing that happens on the show. One question at the end of each hour also known as your American Idiot Test, could and will get you into Anaheim tonight to see Green Day. Here we go, Allie. Question one. This strange sight was seen by many in the Los Angeles skies last night, prompting a huge uptick in searches for things like aliens or UFOs. Um, was it like a comet or a shooting star? Oh, interesting. He said a UFO. I was... This was a apparently a SpaceX Falcon 9 launch that took oh. place, and it was leaving all sorts of weird chemtrails up in the sky. Yeah, that and was there, cool. People were po- did you see them live, Omar, or just the pictures? I did. I was uh, helping uh, my uh, girls' uh, Little League uh, team, and uh, yeah, it was amazing. It was cool. I got so distracted that I actually accidentally hit one of the girls because I was pitching to her. <laughs> you, you did? <laughs> yeah. You, you, hit a, you hit a child last yeah, night? Yeah, we were doing soft toss. It wasn't right. like I was like, you know, throwing hard or Is anything. Is that what you told her after yeah. she fell down? crying after a concussion <laughs> soft toss <laughs> soft toss your pussy let's go I all was right. just like look at that that thing is cool and then she agreed that with me and then we an stared eye. at it for a bit uh, <laughs> all right here we go question number two no one gets the point on that one this current laker I think omar gets a point on omar that gets a point for hitting a child <laughs> Thank you. this current laker is set to uh, release a weekly podcast oh lebron james lebron he said lebron and he's on the board ali's on the board one one we go to question number three to celebrate its 20th Baja anniversary, Mountain Dew is releasing Lord. two new flavors. Name one of them. Oh, man. Um... Just think of random ingredients and add the word adrenaline. Combine them together and you'll figure it is out. Is it a lemonade? All right. I would have accepted the following. Point Break Punch or Laguna Lemonade. Allie. Yeah! Laguna lemonade. They have, and by the way, I better not forget my wife's Baja Versary, or she will never <laughs> let me hear the end of it. We got a question. It's just a bunch of bros in a room going, well, let's come up with some new ones. Go to question number uh, four. It's Ali Knows the News on K Rock. Because of an accounting error, this California NFL team oh has to forfeit a draft pick. Uh, yeah, the Niners. Ali has mushed her Niners yet again. That's correct. Like, what the hell? We forgot it to carry really the is. one, and now you lose a draft pick. And the way we lost the Super Bowl was like, whoopsies, we didn't know the rules. D- d- didn't know the overtime rules. Another accounting error. That was a counting error and then an accounting error. Yes. Question five, Ali's up two. The Supreme Court is hearing arguments in Murphy versus Missouri. which Mur- is a- Murphy? Murphy. Murphy? Are you saying mercy with a lisp? That's right. <laughs> Which is about what, Allie? What is it about? You're not you're you're getting confused with the question. Mercy versus who? It's about talking with peanut butter. What is it about? I don't know. Abortion? Uh, he said pharmaceuticals. Both of you way off. Social media posts oh, are being okay. talked about right now at the Supreme Court level. All right, well, Frank, you put in a decent effort, unfortunately for you. Allie reigns supreme. What must you shamefully admit over the airways of K Rock? Hungry dogs run fast. <laughs> That's, right. <laughs> That's right. 106.7 KROQ. K-Rock. Klein Alley Show. Klein Alley Show. Once again, Green Day. Tickets tonight for you to go to see them at the House of Blues Anaheim. It was just announced. It was a secret show. Cat's out of the bag. We'll get you in every hour. One question at the end of each hour called your American Idiot Test about something that we did on the show, your favorite morning idiots. And if you get that question right, all you got to do is call us up and you're as good as into the show. We'll be doing that at least four times this morning, so be ready to win your tickets. If you commit right now, manifest yourself tonight at the um, 
House of Blues Anaheim with Green Day, you'll probably win. 909 said, just a follow-up for today's show, Jake the Nerd mentioned a while back that he was going to attempt to sleep in his girlfriend's full-size bed over the weekend. How did that go, LOL? Well, I know that Jake worked really hard to get tickets to go to the Weezer show on Friday at the Lodge Room in Highland Park because it was a very important show for his girlfriend. Oh, really? And, and he made it sound like if he got tickets for that show for her, even above himself, he even said. That, that he was going to get laid? He thought there was a chance that he was going to get laid. <gasps> I don't know if it ended up happening. I did see the two of them together. I got to watch a little bit of the inner workings of their relationship. It was... And you said that it seems like he's in his own wing of the house. Like, it's very separated from the rest of the I, house that she occupies. I don't know if I'm right or wrong in assuming this. From, from what I saw, I don't know if Jake has access to the front door of his own house. It, it, when, when, he, when we got there, he told me to walk around the back and join him, and we had to basically climb over a fence and walk through a side door, which opened right... You had to in, climb over a fence? Yeah. I opened a gate. Well, it was a gate or something we climbed over. But then With we, a coat hanger that but, you had to fashion? But then we, you walk into the back area, and you walk right into Jake's world. And I took a bunch of pictures and video, which I'll post on uh, Klein Alley Show. I was trying to figure out what is the weirdest thing in his room, because he's got about a thousand things in there that are all equally weird. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's there's a lot so many of, things in his room except his girlfriend. She's the only thing not in there. <laughs> he's got carcasses. He's got a bunch of memorabilia. He's got random pine cones, rocks from the street. I mean, the amount of rocks he had in there was crazy. But I did not see the two of them. I don't even know if she entered your room at any point. Jake would walk out to the, I guess, the common area, and they would have a pleasant... <laughs> the common area. They would have a pleasant exchange, but then he would... You know, go back to his little room. I mean, it's very clear that that, ev- that that way that's set up is you've got your space and she's got her space. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, but did it work? I mean, this texter is asking, did your plan work? Did, did uh, it work that I had a chance to have sex with her? Yes, I had a chance. But you didn't? No. Oh, my God. How long has it been now? Oh, since before the new year. Oh, my God. Because I was just well, I thought at- you moved in the New Year. I thought that Christmas was when you guys moved in with each other. Yeah, it was, uh, so, like, yeah, sometime late December was the last time. Oh, oh man. my God, dude, <laughs> that is a drought. Because I was reading this thing about relationship red flags and how you know you're in a relationship that you need to get out of. And I think you have a lot of these things on this list, Jake, because the number one thing on the list was that you live like roommates rather than a couple. Yeah, well, that's fine. Everybody's grandparents did that. But that's like the justification that everyone makes. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. No, it's just, you know, I'm busy with work. You know, we've got different schedules, blah, 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 blah. You're making excuses when it's really not healthy for your relationship, and it's a sign that it's going downhill. I disagree. I, I, was, I like the concept of having your own space. Trust me when I say that as someone who has not really had a lot of my own space in any of the places I've lived recently. I think having your own space is huge, but I don't think you guys have any shared space. It doesn't appear that there's even any shared space at all. Yeah, the living room. Yeah, but it doesn't seem like you guys are ever in the living room together. I didn't think you were even allowed in there. No, I go in there like every afternoon. We watch uh, anime together. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. That is not on this list. No, that, <laughs> that should be. Number one red flag. Uh, number two on the list was that you're not having any fun together anymore. And I would say that that Weezer show is probably the f- f- first fun thing that you guys have done together in a long time. Yeah, we had a great time. Number three, you just can't let go of the negative perspective that you have about the relationship, which I'm sure that Klein and I don't make that any better for you. No, I think a negative perspective is healthy. It's like uh, <laughs> when you go see a movie and you have too high hopes for it and then you think it sucks. If you go in with a negative perspective, then the movie's great. Same thing with a relationship. I mean, he is kind of right because even when she said hi to him, he was like, you see that? She talks to me. And I was like, she said hi. Yeah, it's great. She said hi to me too. And I've only met her twice. <laughs> But she so has the, to say hi to me with a different inflection. You and Jake's girlfriend, you have, yeah. you have the same relationship. I have the same relationship <laughs> with Jake's girlfriend that Jake does. Uh, another one is that you have nothing to fight about. Because that you've, sounds awesome. you've stopped caring about your spouse, so you stopped caring ah, about fighting with yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. you got to have a healthy fighting. I, I mean, you, no, and, you and your wife fight all the oh, time. we fight over everything. It's great. <laughs> because we love each it's other. the glue that holds us together. <laughs> that sounds like the worst idea ever. This is like written by some dumb lady. <laughs> Wow. Well. That could contribute to your relationship problems. You don't trust your spouse anymore. I uh, totally trust her to not sleep with me. But wait, wait, Jake, isn't she um 
Last we had heard, she was trying to throw you out, potentially have you move out because she said she wanted to demolish the ceiling above your room to put in a... I don't even know what it was to put in. Just a loft. put in like a loft. Uh, a loft, Yeah, right. it sounded so cool. Yeah, she yeah wanted... I came home yesterday and there was a guy in my bedroom with a tape measure. I was <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> stoked about it. <laughs> and she's going, yeah, so we'd get rid of all this. Yeah, all this is trash. Just imagine that all these octopuses are gone. <laughs> All right, and that guy over there that smells, he'll be gone. She was probably trying to measure <laughs> how big of a trash bag she needs for all your stuff. Um, number six, you talk to your friends more than you talk to your spouse. Yes, but I talk to them about her, so. Yeah, but, but you hang out either alone or with friends more than you hang out with your girlfriend. We all have red flags, don't get me wrong. Allie's wife's maybe sleeping around. But uh, I trust her. Yeah, but, right. See, there you go. But I'm saying this, you're, you're like... Uh, you're hitting them all, dude, one at a time. Yeah, it every seems like one you have most of these. And the last one is that you're not that fond of your spouse anymore, which I think you're fond of her, but she's not fond of you. Ah, we'll see. See, I, I think that this is, this is, and this is seven little problems that most couples ignore that are actually huge red flags. So see, I think you've got all of them. See, if I don't ignore them, then it's fine. But you, I think you're living in a delusion where yes. you think that the status quo is fine and you're just going to stay in it. Like, even we talked to you a couple weeks ago and you were like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to talk to her about it. I think I'm just going to try and look for another place. Like, you're just avoid, avoid, avoid instead of confront, confront, well, confront. But you know how, I did talk to her. Al, you know how it is here on the show. He'll, he'll never admit he's wrong about anything. So right. even this stuff, when it's so obvious for us to see, he is choosing to not even see it. Yeah. But what I witnessed when I went in, I was in Jake's living quarters. I didn't want to go in. I was going to sit in my car. He goes, come on in. I didn't want to experience the sadness because I didn't want to have this much information. Yeah, but you probably had morbid curiosity, uh, right? Of yeah, like, I, I have did. to see what this person's room look, look, looks yeah, like. Yeah, oh, yeah. And uh, and I, what I saw was cool. two, two different lives taking place on the same property. Six two to completely six different said, lives. I think that Jake's relationship is a sham, and I think the measuring tape guy was the side lover. No way. It's possible. Three, 323 said between Klein, Alley, and Jake, I think maybe Omar is the only one with a successful relationship. I think so. <laughs> I mean, look. He- uh, I don't know. The <laughs> truth, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Don't so laugh at us. We're all terribly hey. flawed. We're all flawed. <laughs> Thanks a lot, gorillas, judging us. Klein, the world. Alley. Famous. Show. K-Rock. Klein. Alley. Show. Morning, on K-Rock. It's going to be a good one today for you uh, coming up. First pair of tickets to see Green Day tonight, House of Blues, Anaheim. Small venue, big band, and one question standing between you and that. Every single hour, the last thing we do of the hour will be your American Idiot Test. One question about something that happened that hour on the show. Get it right, call us up, and get yourself tickets. So anything that we say, anything you hear, anything, any audio that's played, uh, it could all potentially be the answer to the question. Be listening every hour. If you got friends, get them to listen as well. Maximize your chances to win these Green Day tickets happening tonight. You don't have to wait around. This is happening tonight. Get out of whatever plans you have, responsibilities, and go to the House of Blues Anaheim so we can get you into the show tonight with Green Day. we got to take a quick break. We'll find out what's going on with the ADD News in just a moment. Text line very active this morning. Goat line has been very active. There's complaints, there's criticisms, there's critiques. 626 said, this is exactly why I've been calling Jake the audio griper instead of the audio sniper. Oh, He's good. always correcting and complaining about something um, well, imagine if that's how it is in the relationship, too. I was just thinking about that. Like, totally. She's, Infuriate. Uh, right. Like, imagine just if any time she says anything, he's he, like, no. He fact checks her. Yes. Like, I would, it would drive me insane. Yeah. Of course I'm I would. I'm sorry for being right. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. I want to break up with you. <sighs> we should oh. rescue her. I would ju- love to talk to her about how would she, she feels. Would about she all come this. on the show, or she, she she's kind of kind of shy? I know in general, but like, would well, she, I think she also is busy and doesn't have time for us. She's like a real job. Yeah, and stuff. Like a real life, she's like yeah. a real adult. She is. She's a homeowner, for God's sake. Uh, uh, but would she still choose to? Would she come on with us to answer any of these questions about? Because I feel like we got so many questions about what you're like to deal with. Uh, maybe I can ask her. Yeah. I, please I, record that. I, I don't even think he'll be able to ask her. I don't think he'll get the time. You can have a question. Uh, get back in your room. Quick break. We will. Uh, I'm going to post. By the way, go to the Klein Alley Show Instagram. I'm going to post the, the three. In my opinion, the three weirdest things Jake has in this room. Great. And good luck arguing over which is the weirdest. <laughs> Coolest. Not. Not at all. Very weird. We'll get to that uh, when we get back. Though, Ali. Will she deliver the news? Yes, she will. ADD News and one question to get you into Green Day tonight. It's all happening next. Klein Alley Show. Carol Q. A-Rock. Klein Alley Show. 
morning in about five minutes. The first pair of tickets to see Green Day tonight, House of Blues Anaheim, could be yours with your very own American Idiot Test every single hour this morning on the show. The last thing we do of the hour will be a question about what just happened. Whoever gets it right, first person through at 800-520-1067 with the right answer. We'll be getting tickets to the just announced secret show at Green Day happening tonight, House of Blues Anaheim. But first, what's happening in the world? Grab your Adderall, because if you don't, someone else will. It's time for ADD News. Now, does anyone have any Adderall? All right, there are real problems, and then there are first world problems, and this would definitely qualify as a first world problem. But people are very upset. It is impossible, Klein, to get a tea time these days. What do we want? Chocolate milk! When do we want it? Now! <laughs> Another first world problem. Um, golfers in L.A. are saying that they are struggling to find ways to golf in this city and that it has gotten out of hand. When they are able to get a tea time, the prices are jacked up, and here's why. Brokers and bots are buying up all the tea times and then reselling them for a profit just like they would do so on Ticketmaster for a concert. But because there's demand, they go, hey, let's just buy every tea time in L.A. and then we'll sell them to people with big, you know, $30, $40 booking fees. Mm. And now Mm -hmm. the guys have nowhere to smoke their cigars and shake hands really hard. So they're starting a movement called Free the Tea. Oh, my God. And it's a hashtag that they've created to go with it. I did not have anything to do with this, but I do know this is a real is- issue. I mean, look. it's not a real issue because these are the fancy boys that uh, want issue. to play fancy at these boys. fancy courses. Just go to Colton and or San Bernardino no. or somewhere else, Dude. and I'm sure there's plenty of courses Omar, where there's availability. Omar, these are the the ones you're talking about, are the ones that are getting booked up. The fancy courses, no way, dude. The, the fancy courses are like the private clubs and stuff. They don't deal. These are everything that Ali's talking about. Are any public, public course courses. in L.A. The You're ones telling me I, can go to Col- I can't go to Colton nope. right now and book a, book nope. a tea time? you can't. Listen to this. No, that's wrong. That's, <laughs> that's someone fapping. That's a, um, that's, that's a get there. <laughs> I play golf. See that? Uh, it, oh, the answer is you probably can't because anytime there's a decent t- there's Listen, there's only a certain amount of time most people can play golf. It's like... On the mornings, usually on the weekends, yeah. those are when the ones that are in demand, and, and you can't find them. My stepdad plays every Saturday. Just like this was happening with restaurant reservations for a while too, where, where people would go and, and they would go to open the table, it up. and they just would, plan in advance, dumbasses. Right, 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 okay. What the hell's wrong with these people? They can't God, pl- these people make me so Omar, angry. They're trying to plan in Jesus. advance. They can't because all the tea How times I, oh, have been oh, booked. Oh, oh. Oh, free lovey, the tea. Um, the, free the tea. Free the <laughs> tea. Oh Did, a hole in your yard, man. Did you not hear this, Omar? I go golf. I play golf. <laughs> you get that and now? Then what was that other one? <laughs> now I get it. And, uh, I stand corrected. And then, uh, then there's this person that's angry about it. <laughs> it's a tiny pony. <laughs> it's a golf club. You All know right. what? You are right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the O pill is officially here and ready to purchase the first ever over the counter birth control pill. But there is another pill that I have an ethical issue with, but you be the judge. It, it, and it's not in existence yet, but they are one step closer to making it a reality. They Hope just it's had a, a break. Female through. Viagra. Is it female Viagra? No, it's the exercise pill. A pill that when you take it gives you the benefits of exercise oh, without having, <laughs> having to Wait, actually exercise. This, like ripped abs? It. Everything. Or just make you thin. It just, I guess, gives you the benefits of... Working out like swole? Like steroids? No, I don't Dude. think it makes you swole, but it oh. says it's supposed to give you... If It's supposed to, quote, mimic the physical boost of a workout and potentially treat couch potato conditions like obesity and muscle atrophy. I so I guess that. it does help you build muscle. <laughs> I'll take that pill so <laughs> you quick. You have every couch potato position. Oh, man, I'll store lines with uh, that pill. And I imagine anybody who rapidly injects themselves with Ozempic will love having a pill that also gives them a workout without having to go to the gym. Yeah, but Ozempic, I think, just makes you uh, skinny but kind of weird, sickly skinny. Skinny. I know, and I then if you to... balance it out with the exercise pill. Right, yeah, that's what I need, the exercise pill. <laughs> but I'm not going to pick it up. I want it delivered to me. <laughs> I don't want to get my car and drive anywhere. All right, the total solar eclipse is getting closer and closer. It's happening April 8th. People will travel thousands of miles to see this thing. Airlines, we talked about it, are offering path of totality flights where you can see the eclipse from the plane. But now there's an even bougier experience that you can pay for. For $4,000, you can get on the Path of Totality train. And it goes from New York City to Niagara Falls. So you'll be in a classic vintage train going from 90% eclipse visibility 
to 100% when you're at Niagara Falls. And it's an overnight trip. You get your gourmet meals included oh, with a private chef. Cool. And then once you get to the falls, you get a whole tour of Niagara Falls and you get that little boat ride. What in a the- racket. We should just rent a boat and call it the Eclipse Boat and charge $1,000 a ticket. I'm going to get in my car. Yeah, like I mean, in Texas. everything just worth the The path of totality. Yeah, the totality car. Toyota. Get in. <laughs> totality on the 10, baby. All right, here we go, guys. American Idiot Test is on. Last thing we're going to do this hour, chance for you to win some tickets to see Green Day tonight. And here's your question. We learned it earlier this hour on the show. It's very sad. When is the last time that Jake had sex with his girlfriend? When is the last time that Jake had sex with his girlfriend? Call now, 800-520-1067. Klein Alley Show. K-R-O-Q. K-Rock. As we mentioned, the last thing we do every single hour before we start a new hour is give you one question that will get you in to see Green Day tonight at House of Blues. It's called your American Idiot Test. Don't want to be an American Idiot. The question will always be something that just happened the previous hour. This question is, uh, Jake mentioned he has not had sex with his girlfriend in a long time. But when is the last time he had sex with his girlfriend? Were you listening? Bob, it's your chance to win the tickets to see Green Day tonight. House of Blues Anaheim at a secret show. What is your guess? My guess is a month. Oh, man. Oh, I man. wish that Jake was correct wishes, for him. But that is unfortunately that someone awesome. that was not listening intently enough. Because Jake gave a very specific answer when he said how long it has been. Bob, you were close, but now we move on to Joe. Joe, when is the last time that Jake had sex with his girlfriend? He said, I don't know, sometime before the new year, end of December. Whoa! That is absolutely correct. And that's such a sad (laughs) thing to celebrate, but that is... (laughs) Yeah, but I thought about it yesterday. Jake, not getting (laughs) laid, has just scored you tickets tonight to see Green Day House of Blues Anaheim. Let's go. Hold you on score, one second. Yeah, you score. <laughs> Jake, score Joe one, Jake zero. Hold on. We kick off a brand new hour of the show right now. And listen closely because there will be one question at the end of this hour that will get you another pair of tickets to tonight's Green Day show. Klein Alley Show. I can't wait to listen to you guys in the morning. I am laughing my bleep off every morning. Das Kempinski Taschenberg Paledi kann mal bei meinem Namen ist Robin Hunt. 106.7 KROQ FM in HD Pasadena, Los Angeles, Orange County. This is the world famous K Rock. Good morning and welcome to just after 7 o'clock on a Tuesday morning. We are Klein Alley Show. Pleasure to meet you if you're a new listener. Welcome. You will learn to like us or at least tolerate us eventually. I'm Klein. There's Alley. Hello. That's uh, DJ Omar Khan. Hey, hey. The audio sniper. The one and only. Then you got the, the assistant to the assistant to the assistant of the audio sniper, Jake the Nerd back there. What's up? It's my Postmaster word. Johnny taking your calls at 800 520 1067, producer Vanessa. And together we are Klein Alley Show. This hour, let's not bury the lead. Everything we say starting now, straight up through 7 59 a.m., could result in you getting yourself some Green Day tickets tonight. Secret show happening, House of Blues Anaheim. We'll get you in. All you got to do is listen. And be ready to call and answer the question correctly at the end of the it hour. It could even be like a drop I played? It could be anything, Omar. It could be a drop oh. you played, uh, big, yeah. big fat asses. That could be could the be answer. That, that could okay. be the answer. We never know what the question will be till the end okay. of the hour. Right. Uh, this hour, we will unload GOAT together. If you've left any messages, there's actually quite a few questions on the GOAT line. Confusion, new listeners that want to be caught up on stuff, so we'll get into that. GOAT line calls at 844-956-GOAT. This is the hour, too. We will celebrate your saddest meal you've ever had in your life. What was the saddest? Wasabi! That was not even a top five. There was a time I was stuck in traffic on my way to a Thanksgiving dinner, and I realized I was not going to make the dinner, but I did have a bag of Trader Joe's turkey jerky in my glove compartment, and one year for Thanksgiving, I had a bottle of water, and turkey jerky from Trader well, Joe's. at least you had turkey. In my car. But I don't even put that in my top five saddest meals. Yeah, I know. And would you agree that once you have children, your meals get much sadder? They do. Absolutely. Like you t- you're eating leftovers yes. all the time. Right? Yes. Yeah. You're yeah. turducketing your own meal based on their leavings. Yes, you're like an afterthought. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll be eating some slightly chewed mac and cheese <laughs> and a decapitated and a dinosaur spaghetti. chicken nugget. That's when good you ask your kid, uh, "Hey, uh, did you uh, suck on any of this?" You know, you yeah. know your life, where your yeah. life is, right? <laughs> <laughs> or spit it out, spit it out. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'll have it. You got a baby bird with your own child. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
So anyway, we'll celebrate your saddest meal that you've ever made yourself or had yourself. That'll be coming up during March Sadness. And um, once again, those Green Day tickets coming up as well. So be ready to join us at 800-520-1067. In a moment, after uh, no doubt, we will unload GOAT together. If you've left any messages, you podcast listeners will probably get to you next on KRO. Klein Alley Show. Let's unload GOAT 24 7, 365. The GOAT line is here for you. Whatever you need questions, comments, critiques, criticisms, complaints, or anything else, that number is 844 956 GOAT. Once a week, we like to go through and unload GOAT together so we can hear what's on your mind and make more space for more of your calls and or songs and or complaints. Uh, here we go, Allie. Hi, Klein and Allie. It's Penny Hills Greg. Oh, great. And I'm wearing a pair of sheared away shiny tan pantyhose today. Okay, why every day he feels the need to tell us and what it's, type it's of pantyhose he's wearing. Always sugar waste, too. I thought he said sheer. Sheer sugar waste. That's the thing? Pantyhose. What does sugar waste mean? I don't know. That's what Allie has. I have a sugar waste. <laughs> you eat enough sugar. <laughs> Watch that waste I don't grow. waste sugar. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. You do not. You can see by looking at your waist. Uh, all right, now we know. That is offensive okay. and also accurate. This Here is we... about pantyhose, Greg, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see a pantyhose fashion show, Allie versus Greg. Let's see it happen. Here we go. Real quick, three questions. Wait, that's not a question. How does Jake know how to smoke crack? How are the roads up on the mountain and... Why does Blind Charlie's voice not at all match what he looks like? There you go. There they were. Thank you. All right. I can answer those questions. I have no idea how Jake knows how to smoke crack, but he did want to talk a lot about it when I was driving with him up to um, Snow Summit. Uh, You thought you could smoke dabs out of a crack pipe. That's what started it. (laughs) That's funny that you think that. Uh, yeah, I, ass- I assume you could. I don't see why you couldn't. Heat and so pipe. So were you, were you going to do that? You know, some listeners gave us some dabs up there, and I, uh, it was a big rock of dabs. I didn't actually know what it was at first. I thought it. Was, I thought he may have given us crack because it was in a... Well, they gave me wax, and then I was like, mm. is this because of the ear thing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they were like, no. People just handing out smoke- their earwax. Smokable wax. So, uh, That's what Dabs is. Uh, answer to question two. The roads uh, at the top of the mountain were great. I don't know why they freak everyone out up there always. Change required. I went through one little area of slush, but, you know, other people said it was a little more squirrely. I didn't go through. I didn't drive through I anything at no all. I had no problem. I had no problem with the road. Even Whatsoever. Johnny, who is terrified of that whole drive up the mountain, they do put a lot of signs that say change required. But the thing about those signs is they're always there. And so all the cars, told you. like hundreds yeah. of Remember? cars pulled over putting chains on. I, know. I was Omar, like, I don't think they even yeah. need to stop. I, it was wild. I watched people do it, and I wanted to yell out the window, take off your chains, dummy. But <laughs> and, and by the way, those chains, a lot of those roads are real. You know, the roads down here are pretty bad from potholes. The roads up there are oh, all so sorts of messed bad. up because everyone's driving around with chains, crushing through the concrete yeah, or whatever, the asphalt. Uh, question three, why does Blind Charlie not look like he sounds? I have no idea. He's blind. He used to be very fat. He had a lot of Taco Bell, played a lot of video games. He lost his vision. Yeah, but now he's really skinny and he's super tan yeah, because so, he goes outside and walks like he, 10 miles a day. Yeah, he doesn't know when he's outside or inside, so he gets really <laughs> tan, I think is what it is. Next uh, message. Hey, guys. Sweet dividend. Um, I just want to leave a little comment for Ali. Uh, I just, I'm kind of biked up on the podcast. I was listening to the, to the March 14th one when Ali and Ray Heppenstein, whatever his name is, uh, did a song, uh, Give Me Your Love. And honestly, Ali... You sound awesome. Ah. I love that song. And if it could be on Spotify or anywhere, I just got it in my heartbeat because, Ali, you sound awesome. Um, Yeah. So I want to say, Jake, make it happen. This is the song Allie recorded with her real life neighbor Ray Heppelspools, and they—it's uh, a good, uh, you know. Look, it's not my style of song, but as far as these types of songs go, where two random strangers yep. meet and are forced to record in a garage <laughs> together, it's pretty good. I mean, I see the light. Upset all the dogs. Come on. Ah, Jesus. I get it. We got to take a quick break. He wants to shoot a music video, by the way. Oh. 
bikini car wash. Here we go. <laughs> uh, be right back. We got more show to get to next. Uh, March sadness is finally here. The saddest meal you've ever had yourself. Lean cuisine is already coming through on the text line. But I'm saying those times when you had to put something together based on lack of ingredients or perhaps you were stuck at an airport and things were closed. Everyone's got at least one. Your March sadness, saddest meal ever. We'll get to those calls next right here, K-Rock. World famous K-Rock. Klein Alley Show. Show, show, show. Klein Alley Show. K-Rock. The brackets have been set. If you're a fan of college basketball, that's March Madness. But, of course, here on K-Rock, we like to focus on things that you've probably dealt with on a daily basis. Everyone remembers their greatest meal they've ever had. Maybe it was a restaurant you went to while you were on vacation, or you got a local spot that you love, best breakfast, burritos, etc. And then there is the sad meals, the ones that don't get the glory. But at some point, because of scheduling, or lack of planning, or lack of funds, you found yourself having the saddest meal ever. And we call this... Your first round of March Sadness. A chance for you to join us on K Rock at 800 520 1067 and share with us the absolute saddest meal you've ever had and what was the reason behind the sad meal. Sometimes it's location as much as it is food, as much as it is lack of utensils to eat the meal. Mm-hmm. Once again, the number is 800 520 1067. Our favorite. We'll put out we'll get a little bracket here. We'll put our, our favorites on this bracket. But our favorite one, we'll give you some tickets. So you can go to WonderCon, the 29th through the 31st at the Anaheim Convention Center. And uh, eat yourself a proper meal while you're at WonderCon. Man, just the other day I made um, Wesley one of those little pizzas. And he took it outside. And then he proceeded to throw it at the window, the screen uh, the screen <laughs> oh, door. Oh, man. So it kind of did this thing where it's like slid, slid down, down and the then window. fell yeah. on the floor. Waste. And then I was like, oh, that's such a waste of food. And then later on, I was like, Meh. and I ate it. I done that. Yeah, you can dust off that credit. <laughs> like, yeah. Wait a minute. It, the thing slid down the side of the house and landed on the ground outside, and you picked it up, and it was only a piece of pizza, and you picked it up it and like you ate it. It was like one of those it. mini pizza things. Yeah. yeah. A frozen, not even a, it was kind of a sad pizza to begin with, even if you made it the regular way. Well, yeah, I'm not going to spend money on real pizza for him because right. it's expensive and he doesn't eat so, it. But you ate he it doesn't off, eat anything. You ate it off the ground. Eventually, didn't you just? I left get it, it there. Uh, I left it there and picked it up and put it back on the plate and then set it uh, out of his reach because it was no longer good enough for him. Allie, what, having been on the floor, th- didn't you just get uh, um, spotted eating the le- the leavings from his lunch when you picked him up at school and all the teachers were so- watch you <laughs> eating like his like scraps from trash well, or something? Well, I well he I picked him up and he has like his little lunch box and he said eat eat so I thought he wanted something to eat but of course I open it and it's like you know random pieces of pasta and old fruit and just stuff that's been sitting in the lunchbox all, all day. day. All day. And then I opened it and he wouldn't eat anything. So I was like, eh, I guess I'll have some. And I'm like eating it, eating it. And then I look to my left and all the teachers are in like a <laughs> conference <laughs> and they're all laughing at me. Yeah. <laughs> they're all uh, in the process of laughing at me. Like, oh, we've be. been there. It's hard for me to pick my saddest meal ever because there's a variety of ones I could go to. But I think the time that I felt the worst about myself was when I made a decision that I was going to do something about my life and start a juice cleanse. And I bought enough cl- I bought enough juices to cleanse for one week. That's a long time. I, oh, yeah, because I made a decision. Now is the time to change my life. This was probably five years ago. And after about four hours of being on this juice cleanse, I was ravenous. I couldn't, I couldn't, <laughs> four hours? Could not have been really? any hungrier. So I immediately for pulled some over. For reason, those juices do make you I was so, so hungry. hungry. <laughs> and I pulled over, and I went to a, into a Trader Joe's, and I bought an ice cream cake. <laughs> and I sat outside on the curb, and I ate it <laughs> by myself with no utensils and my what? hands because I was so effing hungry. Dude. And I also thought what I earned a it. Choice. I earned it. I know it was a weird. Earned it. It was four hours. <laughs> yeah, but I juice cleansed for four hours, dude. <laughs> four hours of juice cleansing. Let's say hi to. It's going to be a tough one. Uh, Marissa, what is the saddest meal you ever had? This is K Rock. It's March Sadness time. What do you got for us? All right. It's like when I was young, not too young, about maybe twelve. I didn't know how to cook. So I made myself a catch of burrito, and I ate that forever after school. Well, see, so once again... you qualify as a burrito? How can you make a burrito out of it? I think if you say burrito... But it's, I, I assume... Yeah. It's how you wrap the tortilla. I mean, right. You know? It's just, it's just... So you just spray ketchup into the tortilla and roll it up? What's the recipe in case anyone wants to make this for themselves <laughs> later, Marissa? All it is is ketchup in it. 
in a flour tortilla. That's yeah, it. that's it. <laughs> ketchup in a flour tortilla. Okay. But yeah. if you say that, that sounds sad. If you say I'm having a ketchup burrito. And if you do it on TikTok, then it's cool. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I All had right. a friend in high school who was so proud that she wouldn't ever let any of us buy her food. So we were at a Denny's and she ordered some ketchup packets and hot water and she made her own tomato soup. Oh. Yeah. And she wouldn't like, you know, she was like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just going to have my soup here. Joe? I was like, what are you <laughs> like doing? Like it's a regular thing. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to uh, March Sadness. Uh, we've all had our own sad meals. I would imagine, Omar, your saddest was the time you ate that dog food that you thought was uh, uh, human it food. It was like a proper meal, man. I just took a bite and I stopped. But yeah, but you got mad at your that you you said the packaging was confusing and you sat down and ate a chicken breast that well, you thought was I for... microwaved it. I sat down, I grabbed the fork, but once I realized it was dog food, I didn't eat the entire plate. It's still a sad meal. It's still, it's still sad. You I still mean, made it's... yourself dog food. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, sad yeah. and dumb. Yeah. <laughs> uh Joe, what is the saddest meal you've ever had? It's March sadness, talking sad meals today. Oh yeah, uh, I've had a bologna sandwich in uh, LA County jail. Oh. Dude, a bologna sandwich is actually yummy. That sounds pretty good. It's jail bologna, though, so there's more to it than well, ju- just that. Well, not that. when somebody's trying to fight you over a ketchup packet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was, yeah well, so- make soup out of that. Who <laughs> won, dude? Joe? <laughs> Did you win the fight, Joe? I, I can't say. Okay. Uh, he gave up the ketchup. Yeah, I think he did. And more than just that. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, Do I get to keep the bologna? The saddest, <laughs> the saddest the meal it, it. you've yeah. ever had. It's March Sadness. A real battle brewing on the phones here. What do you got? It was two ends of a bread loaf, and then I went to add mustard to it, but the mustard was all watery. So, And it was the only bread I had left, and then I went to get some Fritos to put on it, but it was just the Frito dust that was left. Oh. Even though I feel like Jake would be like, mustard sandwich. Yeah, he would love that, but you know, it's funny. Because you do mention the when you have when you have a plan to make yourself something and you just have leave-ins. But you, you don't want to abandon your project. Right. And you're just trying to, hey, my creativity can get me out of this. Yeah, there was a time... And I don't even know if I put this in my top five saddest meals, but if you remember the George Foreman Lean Mean Grilling Machine. I had one. Those things were awesome. They were great. great. And they had that little uh, little trap at the bottom that caught all of the the fat leavings. One time, all I had was bread in the freezer. And I had nothing to put on the bread, and I thought the bread was sad. And I spread (gasps) some leavings. Dude. From the oh, George oh Foreman. Oh, my God. And it was actually kind of delicious. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I'm onto something. That is so disgusting. Uh, Monica, what is the saddest meal you've ever had? Go ahead. It's March Sadness on K-Rock. Mexican food in Iowa. All they had was ground beef. The lady warned us about the spicy salsa, and all it was <laughs> was white people pepper. taco night over there every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was she, bad. She warned you, hey, the salsa's going to be spicy. White people taco night. <laughs> We're getting taco shells from, from the, the grocery, grocery store <laughs> and ground beef from, from the, the grocery store, store <laughs> and shredded <laughs> cheese from the grocery <laughs> store. <laughs> And Ortega sauce <laughs> from the grocery store. That's right. We love white people taco night. Randy, uh, saddest meal you've ever had. It's March Sadness. we got to give away some tickets to WonderCon and just looking for, uh, we're going to fill out this bracket in a moment with all of the saddest meals that you've actually made yourselves or had. What happened? Um, <clears throat> sorry, camping. Uh, we, we, we didn't have the gas. We thought we had to cook the hot water. So a cup of noodles with nothing but just dry noodles. <laughs> oh, man, I've had that before. How do you even eat that? Yeah, it's, it's like, like a, a brick. Yeah, you have to kind of smash it with your fist. <laughs> you you, scru- you, you got to squeeze the cup, yeah, and then you get styrofoam in there. That's what roughing it really is. That's real roughing <laughs> it right there. Yeah, you're just eating it chip style. Everyone at some point has had the crunchy. I've had dry ramen, yeah, but ramen. cup of noodles is an extra challenge. 800-520-1067. We will uh, hear a few more of these and pick a winner. March Sadness, Saddest Meal. We'll do it next. K-Roll. Klein. Owie. K-R-O-Q. Klein Alley Show. K-Rock. Royal Otis, Murder on the Dance Floor. A lot of people ask, who is that Who is that band? What is that song? The song's been around for a while. That's a new version of it. It's K-Rock, and uh, we're in the middle of March Sadness, hearing the saddest meals you've ever had. On the line, tickets for you to go to WonderCon. Got a four-pack of tickets for WonderCon, March 29th through the 31st, Anaheim Convention Center. And remember, everything we do every hour on the show today could result in you seeing Green Day tonight also in Anaheim at the House of Blues because there will be one question, your American Idiot Test, at the end of each hour. 
about something that just happened on the show. And if you get it right, you will be at that show tonight with Green Day. 510 said, um, one day I had nothing in my fridge but lettuce, so I just ate it plain dry like an apple. Oh, man. <laughs> that is so sad. So sad. 714 said, There's my... always one little surprise left. Like, you get you're nothing in the fridge, but you open the drawers, and you're like, there's something and there. And you're like, there's something that I... Like, I ate everything else, and this was the last thing. Yeah. Like, e- even when I got to my most desperate, I was like, no, I'm not going to eat the head of le- lettuce Listen, until now. at some point in your life, you've had a sad meal. We're celebrating those meals right now. Someone for my saddest meal was baby food. <coughs> Oh, jeez. 323. Three, my uh, saddest meals, I just ate Ali <laughs> Snot and shot in my mouth from across the studio. 323. Three. Gross. That was coming on, I couldn't control it. 323, three, a small microwave pizza that I warmed up and then realized it had spots of mold, so I just cut the moldy parts off of it and ate it because I was so hungry. You know, at one point when my daughter was really young, she fell asleep on top of me and I didn't want to move to wake her up because she hadn't slept in a long time uh-huh. and I was so hungry but I didn't want to move and she did have her baby bottle that she hadn't <laughs> finished and I did drink some formula. Oh, dude, that's and, hella nasty, dude. Yeah, I know. It tastes oh. gross. It was really yeah. bad but I was so hungry. <laughs> I was so Damn. hungry. That, but I, it gave you the calcium you needed. Now that I think about, <laughs> now, bones. Now that I think about it, I don't know if I've ever had a non-sad meal. Now, uh, Tristan on K-Rock. It's March Sadness. Your saddest meal, go ahead. Uh, I went to the store to buy, uh, like, discounted chicken. Yep. And I forgot about it, and I didn't want to waste the money. Kind of like Allie is not wasting money and being kind of cheap. And I couldn't tell it was gray. Mm-hmm. So I cooked it anyway. And it stuck up the whole house. Oh. I was sick. My cousin came over and said the house stunk, and I was on the floor just ready to die. Oh, yeah. my God. Well, you didn't waste it, though, so point you. Oh. Uh, Phil, saddest meal. Go ahead. I was hiking in uh, Wyoming and got back to town super late. This little tiny town, and nothing was. We thought we'd go out take out at a restaurant, but nothing was open. So we had to end up going to a convenience store and could nothing substantial eat there except I found this can of like dinty more chili. And so I took it to the cashier and I said, Hey, where's your microwave? And he said, oh, we don't have one. So I thought, I look at my friend and say, we have a micro- microwave in the hotel, right? And he's like, yeah. So go back to the hotel, no microwave, had to eat that thing cold. It was like dog food. Uh, I've had that, dude. It's pretty good. Yeah, Omar swears. <laughs> I used to eat that all the time. Omar man. loves yeah, the t- back can in my college chili. days. Uh, He's like, good. it tastes like dog food, and Omar's like, really? <laughs> That's right. I'm interested. I can't tell the difference. <laughs> uh, David, uh, saddest meal you've ever had is March Sadness on K Rock. What's up? Yo, so one time I was out drinking, and I went to go get some tacos, and I accidentally dropped them, and the dog next to me started eating my tacos off the floor. Mm. That's also a different way to go sad meal when the thing you were most excited oh, about right, gets eaten by someone right, else. Right, right. You watch them enjoy it. Uh, Kathy, we give you the final word. we got to go ahead and decide who wins this round of March oh, come Sadness. come on, Kathy. What do you got? I'm going to say, just based on name alone, <laughs> Kathy's going to win this one. But go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, my mom's a hoarder. And as a kid growing up, she would give us some soggy noodles for food whenever she went to work. We'd stay home all day. And... The things that we would eat are creamer packets, like the carnation creamer packets you get for free whenever you go to the restaurant. Oh, my so God. We would just eat the carnation packets. You know mm. what? Omar's mm. defending dog food. I'm defending those creamer packets. Oh those God. things are delicious. If you this, just drink a is, half and half or one of those. So sad. Mm. You ever have a shot of Parmesan cheese at a pizza store? No. A shot of Parmesan cheese? <laughs> you just, like, open the container and, and eat the Parmesan? <laughs> What? Jake, you're going to win no, this, man. Jake. Jake, you're going to win. Delicious. Uh, I feel like he would purposely walk into a pizza place and be like, can I have that? <laughs> can I have that cheddar parm? Uh, man, we could do but this But how all, do we pick? There's so, There's so many. There's so many sad. Well, we're going to throw them up on the bracket. We're going to call one of you. We'll see how they perform. Uh, put this bracket up in moments at Klein Alley Show. You can see it. One, one of you will get uh, give you a call back, get you some tickets to see. Uh, we'll go to WonderCon. Oh, well, yeah. here's the good news. Coming up, and boy, there's some on the text line that are even sadder than this. 805, leftover Baja Fresh salsa. I was completely wasted, and I stayed at a house. Next morning, the salsa was the only thing I had found, and it was warm salsa. <laughs> <laughs> Just but I've been sitting out all night. Yeah. Um, God, I'm, I'm, I'm equally nauseous, but also starving right now based on reading all these, which I is know. crazy. Oh. Uh, we get back Lots in a second. Allie's got the ADD news, and then the second that is done, we have your question... This hour, your American Idiot Test, the uh, prize, pretty sweet. You'll be seeing Green Day tonight at the House of Blues Anaheim. Big band, tiny venue. We will get you in 
after this quick break right here on K-Rock. Flying Alley Show! Mornings on K-Rock! 106.7 K-R-O-Q. In just a moment at Klein Alley Show on the socials, the saddest part about it is ketchup burrito is misspelled. And uh, it's both ketchup and burrito, both misspelled. Oh, great. So it's a really sad bracket for March Sadness. You can go ahead and look at it and share it with your friends and add your own thoughts in the comments. How is ketchup spelled? Just uh, K-A-T-C-H-U-P. <laughs> ketchup. Ketchup. Uh, we got your ADD news now, and then the second that's done, a question that could be worth tickets for you to see Green Day tonight. Your American Idiot Test is coming up at the end of every hour today. Tickets on the line to go to House of Blues Anaheim tonight and see Green Day, a show that was just announced yesterday, and you'll be there tonight. But first, this. Grab your Adderall. It's time for ADD news. I'm what they call a problem drinker. Klein. Of all the petty arguments that you've been in with your wife on a regular basis, where would you think this one ranks? The concept of leaving every light on in the house. When I get home every day, there is not a light off. (laughs) Every light in every room is on. And I say, and and this is unfortunately for me, I guess, when people say, oh, I feel... I didn't feel like I was old until blank, whatever happened. I voted or until I could buy booze. I never thought anything about lights on. And I don't even know why. Yes, I hate paying utilities and all that stuff. But you taught as a child Turn to, the lights off. Yeah. Yeah, save the planet, whatever. And maybe that's all, you know, Omar would say that's just a bunch of hippie gibberish. No, you know? no, no. It, it's not save the planet. It's save your wallet. Save let's, right. let's be honest. But yeah. uh, I go home and light, not only are lights on, but those stupid ring lights that she uses. For, oh, like the, the vanity lights? Yeah, those are on in, in rooms she's not even in. <laughs> And those you, you have multiple set up around your house? What are you guys doing? R- you she, has, she, she, she has ring That's lights. That's her job, she's shooting, though, she's shoots, like uh, taking pictures and clothing videos. Clothing and this and that. But, I, but I'll be like, you're not even Crazy. home. There's ring lights that are left on in other rooms. It, it looks like a. F- looks like there's about to be a professional baseball game happening there. <laughs> and uh, she says she has seasonal depression and she likes the lights on because the house feels less depressing. Okay, well... Even I, if the uh, sun's out, by the way. The sun could be out, fully out. And I'm like, but there's sun. We live in California. Yeah, I mean, in my house, I'm the light turner offer, and Katie's the light lever on her. It's the first five minutes of my... Every day I get home, it's off, 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 yeah. off, off. Everything's on. So, I, I hate to say it, but Klein, they are right and we are wrong. Experts How is this possible? say that because of modern light bulbs, they're so much more efficient now that turning them on and off incessantly does not make any meaningful difference in your energy bill. Come Especially on. if you have those LED lights. They said you can have a dozen of those things going 24-7 and they still would consume way less energy than what a typical fridge uses in a day. And that That's the process a good point. Of- Unplug the fridge when I get home. <laughs> I'm unplugging that thing. Get but rid of it. Because we were taught when we were younger to turn the lights off because light bulbs were crappy. They were not efficient. Incandescent ones, right? Yeah, so turning them off when you left the room really did make a difference in your electric bill. But now because light bulbs are so much better than they used to be, especially if you have the LED ones, they say even if you leave them all on, on a regular basis, it doesn't make any meaningful difference in your bill. Dude. Well, that's good news. Call I your like wife and let her know. We got to call her and let her I'm know. Not telling her. I don't need to give her one more thing she's right about. <laughs> she already knows she's right. She, if I were to call and tell the story right now, she would go, Yeah, I'm I always right. You. That's right. I'm always right. And you know that. Let's hear it. And she's got the uh, that like condescending tone. Yeah, well, I told you that. She's going to say, If she even yeah, takes the so, call, like, if she even takes the call, she's going to say, <laughs> We Your always... call cannot be completed. Yep. She's as blocked. Dead. She's blocked me. She blocked you. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> and I will say this also because I learned that uh, my, growing up, my parents used to say like if you're driving the car, and you wanted to have the AC on. They would put the window. You have to pick windows or AC. But uh, I let. Oh pe- yeah. I let both go in my. I don't care. Uh-huh. Hey, uh, we're on the air. Hi, sweetie. Hi. I have to tell you, you're right about something. <laughs> what? According to experts, you don't need to turn the lights off when you leave a room anymore because modern day light bulbs are so efficient that it doesn't make any difference in your bill whether you keep them on or off. Is that true? Yeah. No. According to Allie's news, which is accurate 10% of the time, but whatever. <laughs> okay. So, you know, so when I go home think, every day and every goddamn light is on in every room and those ring lights are plugged in and you're not even home what? sometimes and you say it makes you happy? Uh, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. you're right. 
No, it's right. According- <laughs> oh, see? Told you. Told you. This is according to the New York Times. Oh, okay. It says, stop stressing about turning off the lights when you leave the you room. Know who's, you know who's behind this, Allie? Big Light Bulb. Big Light Bulb <laughs> Big Corporation. Light. They're trying to... They want to keep us buying. All right. Just want to say you're right. Okay. okay. What are you in the middle of? It sounds like you're very busy right now. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. You don't, have, you don't Okay. You don't... Love you. Oh, oh. 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 What was she, what's she up to? She's turning on lights. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta go. I got some lights that need to be on. I think she's at the airport right now. Uh, Well, speaking of the airport, we've all been drunk at an airport before, right? It's a nice feeling. It's great. It's great. You don't feel bad about drinking a Bloody Mary at 7 in the morning, but it can be fun and it can go badly very quickly. And some body cam footage was just released of a woman who was actually arrested, I believe, at the end of last year. She was trying to board a flight to Columbia. And Vanessa, she, <laughs> hey. she was asked to consolidate her carry-on items, and she got very, very upset, and it escalated, leading to her arrest for public intoxication. And this is why the footage is going viral, because she's yelling at the police officer about the size of his manhood before she wets herself. Can your wife, with your f***ing five-inch f***ing, you can... Are you done yet? Yes. Yeah. You f***ing six, f***ing five, eight, f***ing dick. Because you wear a uniform, makes you feel good about yourself. You and your f-ing facial hair. I don't want to get urine on myself here, yeah. but it's funny because they tested her and they said that she, witnesses reported she'd only had two vodka tonics. <laughs> it's the, it, oh my god! Really? Which yeah. is the funniest yeah. part? The, the drinks hit a little different at the airport. <laughs> wow. Stress. You with your facial hair. It's like wetting herself and yelling at that him. That does sound like what Vanessa does in my ears every time when I'm running late on the break. She's yelling, <laughs> threatening that. All right, here you go. One question. It's your American Idiot test. First one through with the answer. Going to send you to see Green Day. Tonight we played an original song earlier this hour on the show. Allie laid down some of the vocals for that original song. What was the name of the song we played earlier? Call now. Win next. Klein Alley Show. Klein Alley Show. The American Idiot Test is on. We played a song at some point the last hour between 7 a.m. and right now. Ali sang on that song. What was the name of the song that we played? We mentioned it when we were listening to the Goat Line messages about an hour ago. Let's see who was paying attention. Hello, Lily on K Rock. Good morning. Hi. Oh what my was, gosh, what, it's only like I didn't. <laughs> what was the name of the song that uh, Allie it's sang? Give me, give me Your Love. Give Me Your Love, Allie. Is she right? Let's find give out. Me your love, give Me Your Love, yes. Give Me Your Love, 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 Give Me Your Love. Let's immediately send you to Green Day so you won't have to listen to that anymore. You're as good as in tonight. Congratulations, Lily. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. <laughs> you, Anaheim, House of Blues, Green Day. That show is tonight, and you're in. Hold on, all right? Okay, thank you. If you are jealous of Lily, it's okay. We're going to kick off a brand new hour of the show right now. Everything we do and say on the air can be used to help you get into Green Day tonight with one more American Idiot Test happening just at the end of the 8 o'clock hour, which starts right now. Clyde Alley Show. Your guys' show keeps me going throughout the week. I've got a 100-mile commute every day. And I just appreciate your guys' show. I've been listening to you guys from the beginning. Take care, guys. Love you. Sweet Dibbins. Ah. Oh, my goodness. Woo-hoo. da 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 106.7 KROQ FM in HD Pasadena. Los Angeles. Orange County. This is the world famous K Rock. All right, here we go. We got a good hour planned for you, believe it or not. Not only will we give away some more Green Day tickets, show happening tonight, House of Blues, Anaheim, secret show just announced, and you'll get in. We got for you a new round of neighbor wars. This time it's all about revenge. I did not realize how often, Allie, that wind chimes are used to anger neighbors. There's another story. Involving neighbors, wind chimes, and revenge. And we will hear there from you. There are multiple wind chime neighbor stories? Oh, yeah. Because, oh, really? Yeah, we were talking about, there's one that made the news this week where uh, I guess a couple neighbors got into a fight and the guy decided I was gonna he was going to buy the world's biggest wind chimes. They were like almost human size. <laughs> and he hung them outside of his <laughs> neighbor's place. And they were, you know, as you would expect, just... Very loud. <gasps> and if, oh you're God, next to, if you're next to wind chime people, like... 
God bless you. I don't that, know how people find this relaxing. That's the sound so of insanity. I think it's like anything else. Like if it's your brand of fart, you're okay with it. Yeah, but if it's someone maybe. else's, it's it's just like intolerable. Yeah. That's how I think. We, I think if you know they're your chimes, you're like, ah, oh, it's beautiful. But if you hear anyone else's, you're like, God damn, kill them. I also just feel like it's one of those things that's they're always broken. Always. You know, they always get tangled. They're always broken. So they're even when it's not windy, they're always like. Yeah, it's, just, it's never in a. There's nothing about it I like. Well, we'll get to uh, your own neighbor revenge stories coming up later this hour. Could score you something from us here at K-Rock. Old people's secrets to get to. And clickbait. The internet is full of mysteries and riddles, and we get to the bottom of them. We'll do it all after Who Fights Us right here on K-Rock. K-R-O-Q. Klein Alley Show. The world famous K-Rock. Klein Alley Show. What is the worst time of the day? 24 hours in a day, there is a time that scientists have determined is officially the worst time of the day for a variety of reasons. We'll get to that and more as we get into an exciting edition of Clickbait. Here we go. Clickbait. Click. Hey, all right. As you know, the internet always wants you to just click, click, click. Simple, easy answers, but for whatever reason, you can never find what you're looking for until you end up in a slideshow, in a wormhole, in a rabbit hole. So many holes. Next thing you know, you're ordering stuff off the TikTok show. Or even worse, you're on Wish. <laughs> so let's get to it now. We'll start with this one. Clickbait. Science has determined this is the worst time of the day and the best time of the day. Based on a variety of things like mood, your circadian rhythm, other factors. A new study has revealed the best time of the day and the worst time of the day for most people. So they're different times? Different times. Different okay. times. Two answers each. Allie, what do you say? I feel like I'm going to seem like a sad lady for saying this, but when you wake up. Is the worst time of the day. Yeah. Whenever you wake up. Yeah, because you just want to go back to sleep and okay. you have to wake up. Interesting. So it does, you don't get your The beginning giving, of your day is the worst. The beginning of the day is the worst. Very optimistic. <laughs> That's right. That, and the, wor uh, the best time of day is dinner. It's funny how uh, the same exact woman who gave herself this morning uh, uh, <laughs> mantra. I have nothing to show for myself. I am a loser. That same woman right there is the same woman who says. So when I wake up, I go, oh, God, the, I got to do my affirmations. The, 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 the day you, the <laughs> second you wake up is the worst time of your day. <laughs> that is so sad. All right. Uh, Omar Khan, what is the best time yeah. of the day and the worst time of the day? Science has an answer once and for all. I think the worst time of the day is around 11 a.m. when you realize you have, like, so much work ahead of you still, right, mm -hmm. in the work day. Mm -hmm. And the best time of the day is going to be the opposite of that, when you realize that you only have a half hour of work, and then you get to go home around 4.30 p.m. is my All guess. Right. 4.30, Omar's locked in. Jake the Nerd, science has revealed the best time of the day, worst time of the day based on mood, circadian rhythm, everything else that goes on. There is an answer officially for most people. What is it? Uh, worst time of the day is 3.18 a.m. when my alarm goes off. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. So the you're best stealing time, Allie's answer for the record. Yeah, well, that's just the worst. The best time is, like, right when you get home from work after you get done with traffic. So for most people, that's going to be, like, around 6.30 or so, I guess. According to science, no one's exactly right. Uh, science has discovered that 5 a.m. is officially the worst time of the day. Ah! Based on mood, other factors... In a depressing study, they found that 5 a.m. is by far the worst time of the day. Now, if you're sleeping and you sleep it's right great. through it, it's yeah, probably pretty great. But that's what they say. Um, by contrast, 5 p.m. is when the majority of the people Dude, are, at, the, I was are right. at their cheeriest. Wake up is the worst. Dinner is the best. Who's eating dinner at 5 p.m.? Old people. And right. me. Okay. And sad alleys. Sad alleys and old people. <laughs> so there you go. We move on. It's clickbait on K-Rock. We'll go to this one. Kinky Estate has been revealed. You're wondering, are we the kinkiest steak? Bait. California. What is the clink kinkiest steak? I got this unlocked. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. Really? Probably. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. It's got to be Florida. No way. Everything goes in Florida. There is, like, no boundaries in Florida. Yeah, I do and feel it's like kind of shaped like a, like, weird dong. Florida is shaped like a dong, and there are always people getting their dong stuck in things. It's always a Florida yeah. thing. Like, guy gets it's his dong Florida. stuck in a hot tub jet, or a guy gets his dong stuck in an alligator. It's always Florida. Yeah, and there's no, like, shame. You know, they're all proud of their weirdness. 
This is uh, based <laughs> on a pretty intense study that was done looking at a variety of things from search terms to items that were ordered and sent to the state to the people that live in the state. Uh, it's always interesting. Just so you know, well, I won't, I'll give it away at the end, but the alley kinkiest state, what say you? I think it's got to be Nevada just because of Vegas and the Ooh. legal prostitution and stuff. Everyone's really happy about that. I'll tell you uh, about Vegas is the first place that I ever remember a mini bar in a hotel that had like sex toys yeah. as part of the mini bar. Like it was and like, like a love kit that it was you like could purchase. Chocolate bar, and then be like, wait a minute, that's not a chocolate bar. Whoopsies. <laughs> Is that when uh, one of the first times you enjoyed a lady of the night line? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Well, we, when we is know that, you're is that when the first, first time is someone that, really brought yeah. you a hoe? I never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a, you, were, you were always asking for hoes, man. <laughs> I never uh, experienced a lady of Bring me a hoe, too, and your tickets are yours. All right, that's an old <laughs> that's clip. That's proof, man. That's an old radio bit. <laughs> that's an old radio okay. <laughs> But really, when was the first time? Yeah. The first you've time. Been, come on, you, I know you've been to a brothel or something before. The first time I had a lady of the night it was at 5 p.m. when I was at my happiest. And it was in a city known as Amsterdam. Oh, nice. oh nice. Because I said, who would sleep with this man who's just finished eating three cones full of french fries covered with mayonnaise? Oh, this woman would because... Because she has to. Because she has to. Pain or two. Yeah. And I will tell you, the experience was not great. Yeah, I've kind of heard for that. her. Yeah, it's oh. very for, transactional, right? Yeah, and uh, when I attempted to uh, touch her um, her breasts, <laughs> she said no, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> because my fingers still had men. <laughs> <laughs> They're so greasy. And look at and you that now. that is <laughs> what a beautiful my first experience <laughs> with a lady of the night. Oh, but not your last? <laughs> not, no, no comment. Oh, Vanessa wow. says we have to wrap it up. Okay. So I'll tell you the answer. You should wrap it up. You know, <laughs> the answer. That, that's, that's what she said, too. Yeah. <laughs> I want to guess. Uh, go okay, ahead, Jay, Jay, quickly. We have to go. We're way easily because it's the freakiest people, the most sexually repressed people. So I'm guessing Utah because it's full of Mormons. Oh, good idea. Oh. Yeah. All right. Uh, California was in sixth place. Also on the list, Nevada, New York, Texas. But congratulations. Omar was close. <gasps> Florida's upstairs. Kinkier neighbor, Georgia. What? <laughs> They were number one on the list. we got to take a break. We're back with more show next. Maybe something we just said could be the result of you getting uh, some tickets to see Green Day later this hour. Go nowhere. Show continues after this. Klein. Alley Show. Klein Alley Show. 106.7 FM. K-Rock. Klein Alley Show. The soothing sounds of the killers on K-Rock. And then the not-so-soothing sounds of wind chimes. Official fighting words for neighbors. A, a field full of different wind, ch- wind chimes? This is Seems one, like a lot of wind chimes. That's how you can tell your neighbor hates you when they put up that many wind chimes oh. at the same time. I didn't realize how many spats have happened uh, between neighbors involving wind chimes, which is the reason we're doing this edition of Neighbor Wars Revenge. Seems like that's the ultimate go-to revenge. If you have a neighbor that's bothering you for whatever reason... Put up loud wind chimes. Mm-hmm, yeah, it seems like a good weapon. This person claims that uh, their neighbor, uh, they were feuding, and their neighbor decided to find human-sized wind chimes <laughs> and hung them right outside of the window. Which, who the hell made those? That's got to be just... like, what lady is like, they need to be bigger. We kindly asked for a number of times with no success to please take them down. They are incredibly loud and wake us up all night long. There's nothing soothing about them. And uh, they have uh, decided that uh, they still have gone with it. Now, a lot of people have gone with the revenge tactic of signing up their neighbor for tons of different junk mail services where things get delivered to their house. Oh, that's a good one. I don't think anyone even checks the mail anymore anyway, so it feels like it's just whatever. It's another piece of junk. Just throw it out. Right. But But you do have to kind of get creative depending on your level of hatred for your neighbor, and that's where I kind of appreciate it, right? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to put thought and effort into it, you want to do something that is just clever enough, but also you know will give you the feel, the feeling of victory. Like, I won this round. Yeah, That's and something that to. slowly, like, over time annoys them versus just one thing. Yeah, like, uh, I know a guy that used to always get into a fight with his neighbor about the parking spots on the street that didn't really belong to either of them, but it was just kind of an unexpl- 
you know, people just assume the spots in front of your house are kind of, you would at least have first dibs at those spots, mm -hmm. even though they're technically available for anyone on the street. But, it's kind of an unwritten rule. And, but the guy said It's that also common courtesy. It's yeah. common courtesy. Right, yeah. Omar. And, and people, I think it's like one of those things. It's not a rule. It's not a law, but it's an unwritten rule that the spots in front of your house, your cars would get priority. However, in this particular case, there was a good tree in front of the guy's house. So on a hot day, people like to park their car there because it got shaded so you could get oh. back into the car and it wouldn't be boiling hot. Mm -hmm. uh, they got into a fight. It ended up with one of them painting the curb red. Cool. As a way of saying that you can't park here. But it was an unofficial red curb, which I guess a lot of them are unofficial red curbs now because people just assume that'll let keep people away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do that with no trespassing signs, too. It's like, I'm just going to put up no trespassing signs, even though... Anyone can put up a sign. Doesn't really mean anything. So this, uh, this Omar gave us this audio. This was a previous neighbor war that happened, and this also involved wind chimes, Ali. But this was from a few years ago. But it just go goes to show you, wind chimes may be the number one reason that neighbors hate each other. In a city where loud noises aren't hard to find, this sound to be much more pleasant. Christine Walzak thought so when she put this wind chime up in front of her home on Kent Street in Brooklyn to honor her mother's memory. She passed away last year. Just a reminder of her, that's it. But last week... My mother loved annoying wind chimes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a legacy to her. My mom to always annoy nagged everyone me. everyone on my street. And I said, what could I do that would let everyone feel the same way I felt when my mom would nag me about being single? Look, if I die before you, just put up some really annoying wind chimes, will ya? I, Allie, <laughs> nothing would make me think of you more than annoying wind chimes. <laughs> but last week, an unknown neighbor sent Walzak a letter. Basically complaining that the wind chime is bothering, distracting them at night, keeping them from sleeping. I mean, if it's windy, of course it's going to, you know, chime, but it really... Now you know. If it's windy, it's going to chime. <laughs> wow. It's what a brain on this Revolutionary. One, huh? <laughs> good, was that in the product description? Good takeaway for today's show. But when it's windy, it's going to chime. If it's windy, of course it's going to, you know, chime, but it really doesn't make... <laughs> That big of a chime. Is she, that, yes, the news, is she giving the news a sample chime? She's giving them sample chimes, <laughs> and she's using that as the example of why it's pleasant, but it's not. Uh, that big of a chime. Walzak says she wishes the neighbor had talked to her in person, so she asked them to do so by posting the letter with her response on the tree. Just to get a reaction from that neighbor to see if maybe they'll come and speak to me. They didn't. The reaction she did get has been overwhelming and supportive. I woke up with a note on my door from the neighbors telling me to keep it. Notes attached to those notes telling me to keep it. <laughs> the wind chimes I hear it at night, it's actually a peaceful sound. Oh, Other stop not, it. It's not a peaceful that sound. That person also hates the neighbor. Yeah, oh. He also yeah. has a bunch of chimes himself. Right, he's a chimer. He's a chimer. He's definitely a chimer. There's chimers and non-chimers. 951 said, you know, you can sign up your neighbor to be visited by Jehovah's Witnesses. No way. <laughs> oh, that's a good revenge. Uh, neighbor Wars Revenge. Go ahead, you're on K-Rock. What happened? Hello. Hi, Hi. My brother... My brother and his friends, we have a typical grumpy old man neighbor who would call the police on us for everything, playing instrument, music too loud, playing in our front yard. So they had a really big dog. We threw the poop in his pool for months. Oh, oh my God. Never figured Damn, out who dude, it was. that's messed up. Oh, that's not good. That's that's serious revenge. It's not as clever as giant human-sized wind chimes. Human-sized turds in the Just pool. Just throwing turds in a pool yeah. is, is yeah. definitely more simplistic, but I think way more annoying. You didn't put a lot of thought into that, I guess. <laughs> Uh, no, you just look at your dog's poop and then go, hmm, uh, put this that is in there. <laughs> this is 310, a neighbor that would always park blocking my driveway, I ended up putting bird seed all over the top of his <sighs> car. So birds would come there, eat it, and take craps all over his car. He didn't know it was me, couldn't have traced it back to me, but boy, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Dude, 714 said, I'm a person who responds to calls of neighbors disputing on a regular basis, and wind chimes and fountains being too loud is the majority of Come on. Calls. Loud fountains? No, fountains fountains, are, fountains nice. are nice. Come on. Yeah, but yeah. fountains are nice, but let's be honest. If you're not cleaning that filter, eventually when that water stops making that sweet water sound, you get that like... Yeah, you know, that I think that's what's happening with mine right now, actually. 714 said, I lived in an apartment complex where my neighbor constantly parked in a disabled spot even though he was not disabled, and it was a serious pet peeve of mine, so I just keyed the crap out of his car. See, once again, I put that in the category of not clever. 
clever, just destructive. And yeah. I think that a real good, if it's a neighbor war and you want to put the right amount of revenge into it, you got it's got to have some creativity. Yeah, like like putting a bunch of wind chimes around is. I mean, eventually everyone will suffer from that, but at, at least it's there's just a, so funny revenge. Yeah, there's at least a cleverness to it, more so than the traditional keying or throwing dog poop in what the car. What about sending one of those glitter bombs? Yeah, I mean the glitter bombs. It's a good, it's a good gag as well. Uh, you I can feel send- like it's been done, though. It, it's been done. Uh, Jackie on K-Rock, go ahead. What's up? Welcome to Neighbor Wars. Hello. Hello? Yeah, yeah. you're on. Hi. Sorry, I know the wind chimes Hi. have made everyone hard of hearing Never. right now. But go <laughs> Everyone's ahead. like, what? Hello? Well, go ahead. You're on K-Rock. It's your turn to talk now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> that we share on the property with them. They use it, but yeah. uh, we have the power box for it. Right. And they will park in the driveway and block us in because we're in a duplex. Um, or their kids will be really obnoxious playing around in our part of the yard. So when they piss us off, we uh, we turn the power box off for the garage. <laughs> oh, man. There. That's like playing God right there when you start messing with people's power. And then people used to just see them all disoriented. Like, I don't know what's going on. What do you yeah. think? Wait, wait. Do you have internet? Turning off the power box. That's a big move right there. That is so it. How, what an amazing thing that you have access to their power box. That is a literal power move, what she just did. Yeah. The world famous K Rock. Klein Alley Show. K Rock Q. Uh, we got a lot happening in the next 10 minutes. We got a question that could result in you getting yourself into see Green Day tonight, House of Blues Anaheim. That's a very, very exclusive show. Completely sold out. I don't even think a lot of tickets went for sale. And you will get in. So we'll make that happen, and we're going to get you on a standby boarding list, hopefully, so you can go see Weezer in Manchester, England, as part of K-Rock World Tour 2024. He'll say, Klein sounded like he got real sad once his wife called today on the show. Well, technically, we called her. I'm tired. I was at a Laker game last night. I drank during the week again. I realized, after not drinking for so many months, drinking again during the week, especially on a Monday, that does take a toll on me. Mm -hmm. And I drank a bit. Good. Uh, So anyway, let's get to your news now. Why don't you turn Ellie's mic on, dude? No, I'm not. I'm not on it. Sorry, I, her oh, mic is on. Okay, she okay, she moved okay, away. Right, her face right. is getting so large, Omar, that it's hard. No. <laughs> Let's get to the news now. Let's get. This is the actual news. Let's get through your ramble so that we all can right, get to ADD right, news. All right, Jesus. All right, all right. <laughs> Wrap your ass. It's time for ADD news, and now the Kankle Queen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you wanted to get to that faster? <laughs> Are you feeling too good about yourself before that? <laughs> All right, there are a lot of different types of tourism these days. It's not just regular anymore. We talked about astro tourism, where people travel to see the stars and the planets. Dark tourism is where you travel to see haunted things. You could also call them call them a spookation, but we don't need to go there. Now there is burglary tourism, and this happened with that graffiti high rise in downtown LA. People were traveling from other states just to tag it, but now it's going further. Burglars from other countries, specifically in South America, are coming to L.A. to rob mansions, and then they just hop on a plane with all the loot, and they go right back to their homes. Genius. And this is happening in Chile and Colombia. They're planning this full trips. This doesn't sound right. This doesn't sound right. Uh, d- really? Uh, defend Colombia, Vanessa, right because they've got statistics that show a bunch of gangs from Colombia... Probably related We're to you. We're not into gangs. Wrong country. They're called cartels. Oh, going. sorry. Cartels yeah. are coming here and they're planning <laughs> trips. They're bringing empty pillowcases, landing in L.A., loading them up with our stuff, and then going back to Colombia. No. I think this is wrong. Uh, fair enough. No. She makes a good argument. <laughs> okay. Um, at one point, the best gift that you could give someone was a 23andMe DNA kit. Such a great gift. Everyone yeah. loved it. Then gave it, gave it to both my parents. Yeah, I think I got it as a gift one year, and I was like, this is so cool. And now the coolest gift you can give someone is a doggy DNA kit, where everybody with a dog loves to find out exactly what their dog is so that they can go to the park and be like, she's part Australian Shepherd. That's why she yeah, cool. runs like that. Um, but now the legitimacy of those companies is being questioned because people are sending in human samples and getting dog results. Um, oh, a lady man. sent in her cheek swab, and it came back that she was part Labrador. And an was in- she? No. And an investigative reporter sent in a human sample, and it said that she was 40% Alaskan Malamute. So Ooh. now people are like, dude, what is with this doggy DNA crap? But the doggy DNA companies are like, hey, our tests are designed to test dog DNA. We don't have the ability to test human DNA. So we're just going to come back with dog stuff. Like... 
It will that, give you the close. But it, it, it'll I give would you be, the closest dog. I would be curious to know what dog I am the closest to <laughs> in DNA. That would be fascinating. So for now me. breeds the new trend. Yeah, humans, humans. buying each other yeah. doggy How DNA. How much kids. of those uh, doggy DNA kids? We should all I send think they're our. They're expensive. They're like hundred bucks, hundred and fifty bucks. Man, let's find out. Did you do it, Jake? Yeah, Jake I finally would. did it for Kimmy's two year like birthday. What? You, you spend money on the dumbest are, are things. I, I, I used to feel want bad to for hear Jake. You complain about money. Uh, it's unbelievable. Because you are horrible he, with your spending. Yeah, he bought one of those shirts at the Weezer show oh. on Friday. Those were like uh, not cheap shirts either. And they were forty now. They're selling for eighty. So I'm gonna sell it. Oh. Yeah, but I mean, you're buying doggy DNA kits. The guy came and buy himself a sandwich for lunch. Yeah, I spend money on the important things. What did you find out your dog was? Oh, what, she, what I thought she was. Oh. Oh, my oh, my God. Oh, my God. What a waste. <laughs> God, he's the worst. He is the worst. All right, and then Lollapalooza, the lineup was just announced, uh, taking place, obviously, in Chicago in August, August 1st through 4th. And headlining is SZA, Tyler, the Creator, Blink-182, The Killers. Uh, you got Hosier on the lineup. You've got Deftones, Pierce the Veil, Dominic Fike. Posting the complete sheet up at uh, socials. Klein Alley Show. I'm Kesha. Sure got them up I know a well. lot of people oh. are going to care about that. There you go. Um, but, I mean, the list is very, very long. Cannons is on here. Um, I see our buddies in Wolves of Glendale Wolves made of Glendale it. Good for them. on here. Nice. Yeah, so there's a lot of great people, as always. All right. Uh, yeah, check out that uh, krock.com or the socials. Klein Alley Show. All right. You ready to win yourself some tickets to see? Green Day, here's your question. First one through with the right answer. You'll get tickets tonight to see Green Day House of Blues. And the question is, I don't like this question. Where did Klein say last hour was the first place he was with a whore? <laughs> hey, babe, bring me a hoe too, Brad. 800-520-1067. That is your question. We'll get to the answer and your tickets to see Green Day next. The world famous K-Rock. K-Rock. Klein Alley Show. Let's make someone's day way better by sending them to see Green Day tonight. Don't wanna be an American idiot. Time for your American Idiot Test. We only have one more after this, Allie. A pair of tickets to see Green Day tonight, House of Blues Anaheim. Every hour we kick off another chance to win with one question. The answer was given at some point during the last hour. And what was the question we gave a moment ago? Yeah. I remember. I remember, too. It's what, what location did Klein have his first tour? I already vetoed the question because it makes it sound like I've had lots of locations and lots of whores, and this is a, a storyline uh, of all the whores. I don't like. Where was the first? Omar has been exaggerating this because you have not okay. at all, oh, not yeah, even a little bit. This is actually this is something. Stuff. Chris, <sighs> Chris, your chance. One question. Hopefully, you were listening to the entire last hour of the show. Do you have the answer? I do. Uh, it's Amsterdam. Okay, that is correct. <laughs> Thank By the you. way, Omar mentioned this with no context whatsoever and no evidence. And now... Well, I do of, have evidence. Now uh, there is here. so much evidence to support. Yeah. And here's a little soundbite from uh, that experience. Oh, yeah, Klein, you're such a bad boy. Okay. That's <laughs> you're such a bad boy. You like that, don't Dutch, you? It's a Dutch accent. Yeah, you're such a dirty bad boy. Thank uh-huh. you. That's not true. Chris, congratulations. You are a bad boy. You're going to go see uh, Green Day. Tonight, House of Blues, Anaheim. Thank you so much, guys. You're very welcome. Hold on one second. Make Chris, sure you, you think Klein's a bad boy? you very bad boy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Klein Alley Show. I never get to listen to you guys live, but I'm up early today. So excited. Double Deuces Blues, Dong Dong, Rock Ten Panty Lines, Sweet Dibbit. Sweet Dibbit. 106.7 KROQ FM in HD Pasadena. Los Angeles. Orange County. This is the world famous K Rock. All right, we got those tickets out of the way. Let's clear out the lines and give someone else a chance to win now because Weezer has got a little show that they've announced. Sold out very quickly, happening at the Intuit Dome. Not even open yet, but it will be in time for their show in October, and we will give you tickets to that show and write your name down on this standby list so you can see them again in Manchester, England. It's part of K Rock World Tour 2024. If you'd like to see Weezer, once and potentially twice. Call us now. We'll pick up caller 20 in a moment and give you the good news that you're off to see the Weezer. Nice to meet you. I'm Klein. There's Allie right there. Hello. You got uh, Jake the Nerd back there, What's DJ up? Omar Khan, me such a bad boy. I don't know. 
<laughs> I guess I am. I guess that's the proof. Is that how they say it in Amsterdam? That's how they say it, Allie. I was trying to find a, a way to communicate with the locals. And you're shaking your money around. Uh, that's right. That's uh, Vanessa and that. Postmaster Johnny in the back, very anxiously taking your calls, and we'll get to a winner in just a moment. This hour on the show, Old People's Secrets. How would you like to live forever? Old people think they know the secret? Every week we hear a different one. You think at some point one of them's going to be right, just no, on process of elimination they're alone. Always different. In fact, William Shatner just turned ninety-three years old, and they were like, "What's your secret?" And he said, "The secret is not to tell anybody." See that? And maybe I was the, like, "Dude, this is the finally like a real one." That's that guy's keeping it because he doesn't need the money and the glory he's had it his whole no. life. But all these you know no names like uh, this woman, what's her name? Miss uh, Gussie. Miss Gussie. You know, she's looking for her fifteen minutes of fame, so she's one hundred and six, and she's going to give us the secret. We'll get to that coming up this hour on the show. We have, uh, it, I didn't realize this, Allie, but someone on the show got very concerned when we talked about how we're all going to develop hunchbacks as a result of being on our cell phones too much. Right. That oh, someone yes. on the show is now getting fitted for a back brace. <laughs> what? Because, oh, yes, Omar. They went down a rabbit hole. Uh, <laughs> Vanessa, I didn't say it was you just yet. Don't blow this. <laughs> someone on the show is so concerned that they are going to develop a hunchback that they are getting their own back brace. <laughs> Are you going to walk back, Vanessa, and go, but who is it? Yeah. It's not me. All right. It's not well, me. It's Vanessa. Uh, uh, she's gone through the process, I'm telling you. So we'll get to that this hour as well. And, of course, as always, listen closely to everything we say because one more time before we get out of here, just before 10 o'clock, another one-question American Idiot test that could result in you getting tickets to see Green Day tonight, House of Blues. But first, Allie, let's go ahead and make someone's day better by sending them to Weezer. And I say hi to caller 20, which puts us in, hold on one second, puts us in Agora, oh. I believe. Hello, who are you? K-Rock? Hi, this is Scott. Scott, here's what we got for you. Weezer tickets, into it Dome, and I'm writing your name down on a standby list. Maybe you'll see them again. Manchester, England, all right? That would be incredible. World famous K Rock. Klein Alley Show. Show, show, show. Klein Alley Show. K Rock. Three greatest words in the English language, and they came back to bite me in the ass last night. Those words are bacon wrap hot dog. Oh, no. And last night, after leaving crypto in the middle of the third quarter, watching the Lakers and the Atlanta uh, Hawks, I decided, even though I didn't need it and wasn't really hungry, I could not pass up the opportunity. At a bacon wrapped hot dog. Did you go just to any the first one you saw, or did you like one caught your eye as a really you nice know, plump? It's looking gotten match? pretty chaotic down there. I haven't been to a Lakers game in a while, and I don't know if it's because since they put up the Kobe statue, but the entire area out there, every the amount of people that have tents, folding tables, uh, shirts, jerseys, hot dogs, toys, glow sticks, it is. It's chaos, it's, yeah. It's complete. It's chaos. And um, I was kind of perusing. They all look kind of the same. For the most part, all the bacon wrap hot dog carts are similar in design. Because we've talked about how the quality has dwindled. Dwindled. And I actually did have some cash on me, which is rare. So I was excited to not have to scan the uh, barcode for a Zelle or Venmo or Cash App transaction. Uh, and I was kind of looking, but they, they prices were not posted, which is another thing they do. They don't post the prices because the price becomes a very, let's go ahead and either do it by the person or by the supply and demand or by the event. I'm sure that same cart is selling $2 bacon wrapped hot dogs some days and $20 bacon wrapped hot dogs other days. Yeah, yeah, and they can always like tell. So And people like you, they're like, mm, let's go 12. I, um, <laughs> this guy will pay anything. Look at him. <laughs> Look at this fat loser. He needs a bacon wrapped hot dog. So, I was looking. There was a guy. He right away hits me up with 15. And I go, that's crazy. What? I said, Sorry. And I kind of move on. And I kind of, and there's like 20 of them in a row. I mean, they're were, they were like boom, 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 Dude, boom, boom, touching. Think Fif about how you go to Costco and pay $1.50 yeah. for I'm, a hot dog. There's no bacon wrapped around it. 
That doesn't mean it should be fifteen dollars. That's but, insane. Well, I know, but they look at me. They go, "That guy looks like he's got it together." Oh, they're looking that at me. That makes me so angry. No one thinks that. Yeah, well, maybe they do. So, I mean, the game he started at fifteen. I, I took that as a compliment that this guy thinks I got fifteen dollars to spend on a bacon wrapped hot dog. So I go like, "Nah, I'm good." I kind of keep walking, but they could tell. And I was out early, so it's not like the, there was not the whole scene of everyone leaving at once. So I was also kind of the first. Yeah, I was like the easy prey. Yeah, this is when they're getting everything ready. And then uh, I'm standing, I'm looking at one, and the guy's speaking Spanish, and my Spanish is not great, but I try sometimes, and then a guy comes up next to me in English and goes, oh, you got five, I'll do five cash. I go, great, give the guy five cash. He then walks away, and I go to the grab my hot dog from the guy in front of me in Sp- speaking Spanish, and I take it, and I take a bite, and he says, uh, diez dólares. And I said, no, 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 whoa, whoa, I just gave five dollars to that guy. He goes, I don't know that guy. Oh, my God. (laughs) So you just gave a stranger $5? I got, listen to this, Allie. Here's the scam. The guy that I gave the $5 to was holding tongs. He was. Wait, 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 wait. So he came up and said $5 for a hot dog? He said he would do for five. And I saw, I thought he was with the guy whose cart I was in front of. So he's holding tongs. Do you understand? Yeah. I understand he's holding tongs, (laughs) but where did he go? You gave him $5 and he just walked away? I, I gave, it was. Yes, I gave him the $5. He was a ghost. No, was gave... he at a different hot dog cart? So that's my my first thought was, okay, I got to go find his cart. I looked. And he's nowhere to be didn't found? Didn't see him anywhere. Oh, my God. So, so he's I, just walking around with tongs I, off? I think there's a scam going on. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to bring this to your attention right now. If you go to Staples Center or any event and a guy comes up to you holding tongs and tries to undercut the other hot dog guys, you assume because he's holding tongs, he's got hot dogs. Do not give him $5. <laughs> I'm serious. Do not fall for the tong man. <laughs> Allie, this is not a joke. I said to the guy, you saw me, you saw me hand him $5. And he goes, eh, I don't know him. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I said, but I was right but here. I was right here. So now you I- You think I, that guy's in on it too? That's what I think. Is he in on the scam too? But yeah. he only had to pay 10 he asked me for 10 That's all he was charging for the right. hot dog. But I was already in for 5 for the tong so man. So you paid- <laughs> So- <laughs> you paid the 10 did you get your hot dog? Yeah, I took a, I took a bite of the The guy handed me the hot dog. I oh, took a bite man. and started to turn around. The guy said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, yes, dollars. And I said, no, no, no. I just paid the guy. He goes, I don't know that guy. <laughs> and then I was looking around, and I don't see this guy anywhere. Now. Oh, my God. God. Whoa. What a great athlete. Um, get him on the Lakers <laughs> immediately. Klein Alley Show. Daryl Q. K-Rock. Klein Alley Show. Hey guys, as of right now, just want to let you know that Evanescence has 1,271,977,100 views. Thank you for that information. A lot of people on the text line. Every time that song is on, I want to know. Omar, I love that that has stayed. Omar can update. Years. Omar can update everyone. One time I mentioned that song had a billion views. That's all I said one time, and Omar got all upset about it. Uh, fun fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's Klein Alley Show. Uh, it's K Rock. Uh, this hour, at some point, something we say, something these idiots say on the radio could result in you winning tickets to see Green Day tonight. It's your one question American idiot test, and you'll have one more chance in the next 20 minutes right here on K Rock. All right, Allie. Mm-hmm. Let's live forever with a new old people's secret. From chicken brain chicken to drinking rain, not getting laid. They call me the barmaid. They call, they call me, me the barmaid. barmaid. That's right. <laughs> Let's live forever with sweet dibbit. Sweet, sweet dibbit. dibbit. Time for some old people secrets. Shh. Ali said it. William Shatter turned 93 and said, The secret is I don't give away the secret. Finally, uh, someone being honest. But here is a woman who's 106, and she also is going to try to steer us to an early grave. My theory, old people are trying to set us up for failure, sabotaging us so we don't get the glory that they get when the news crews show up at their door and give us a bunch of information about the year they were born like they did with Miss Gussie. It's a big, big birthday for a Huntersville woman celebrating 106 years of life today. For some context on that, on the year of her birth back in 1917, the U.S. just entered World War I. OMG was just used for the first time, and the price of gas was 15 cents a gallon, you guys. Wow. Uh, do, we, do, wow. do we need wow. context? Like, do, I think everyone understands what 100 and you're old. Everyone oh. understands time. Yeah, we understand 100. 100 is old. You're an old person. 106, you're even older. 
And I hate at the beginning where it's like, someone's got a big, right. big birthday. Right. That's the big. <laughs> yeah. like, that's the same way they would speak to a one-year-old. Yes. And that is the part that is the most humiliating of the I mean, whole that's thing. like what I said to my son when right. he turned two. Hey, yo, it's a wow, big birthday today. you're two yeah, this Please many. do not. If I, I know I'm not going to live to 105, but if I do, please do not get in my face and yell at me. It's a big birthday. Oh, no. We are going to humiliate you. We're going to give you a little crown. You'll be long dead by then, Allie. Yeah, Don't you worry. Allie's right? going to go way I'll early. go by You're cancer. aging terribly. <laughs> Can you imagine that? The price of gas and the OMG got me. That's a real factoid, by the way. Yeah, it is. Oh. <laughs> Oh, they love fun facts, too. Yeah, that's right. I wonder if they know about Evanescence. Right? <laughs> love their factoids. You better tell them. Uh, anyone who uses the word factoid should just be punched <laughs> in the throat. All right? There's a factoid for you. Goodness. We love Miss Gussie. She's fabulous. WCNC Charlotte's Destiny Richards. Talk to her. Has the key to long life and happy life. Miss Gussie knows that a 106th birthday is special. God provided for me to have food and shelter, and also he provided for me to do traveling. <laughs> I like this woman. That microphone is soaked. <laughs> traveling. Yeah, that woman's, that, woman, <laughs> uh-huh. that woman's gonna live a lot longer than that microphone. Uh, yeah. That's and me. also he provided for me to do traveling. She now celebrates 100... <laughs> Oh my, oh my, oh my. It's oh. running away, run! Uh, she's, listen, so she's 106, so she's pretty well spoken for 106, mm-hmm. Allie. Yeah, mm-hmm. some people, we hear about these and they're like not even able to make intelligible words. No, and that's where most of the secrets come from that we play on the show repeatedly. It's a, mm-hmm. I'm like, what? Traveling. So maybe that'll be the secret. Let's find out. We're going to get to it in a moment, so place your bet. She now celebrates 106 years, surrounded by generations of family. For anyone else looking to live as long as she has, she had this to say. Mm. All right, place your bets. Okay. That's what we know about her. She likes traveling. She mentioned God. That's always a big thing. But what will be her secret for living to 106? Um, I would say always make new friends. Always make new friends. Yeah, because she's traveling. She's talking to people. She wants new experiences, new people in her life. You want to live forever, Omar. What do you have to do, according to Miss Gussie? Um... It, it's a, it's along the same lines of uh, Allie's guess, but I'm going to say just kind of like discovering new things, new experiences, not necessarily friends, but just discovering new things uh-huh. because, yeah, she likes to travel. Just new things. Jake the Nerd, what does Miss Gussie say? She said, I want to do a puzzle. Puzzles. Puzzling. Yeah, it keeps the brain sharp. That's I what they puzzles. always claim. As you know, Klein, I'm an avid puzzler. Oh, we know, Allie. It's one of the saddest things about you. <laughs> All right, well, here's what Miss Gussie says. 106. If you want to live forever, you do like Miss Gussie does. Life is what you make it. You can be successful and you can be a street walker. Oh, my God. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Is she, is she uh, condoning being a street walker or is she saying, like, you could do something good or you could be a street walker? You can be successful and you can be a street walker. So I guess she's I mean, saying. I'm sure there's street walkers that are successful too, right? No kidding. Yeah, I think she's And then there saying, are ones who aren't, like the one Klein got with. She was That's very true. successful. Very, I was in a long line to get to her. She was the biggest loser that day. Uh, <laughs> so I think what she's saying is it doesn't matter. Life is what you make of it. And you could do, be successful or you could you be, a be a street, street walker. walker. Which is what she's encouraging. <laughs> so there you I have think it. that's good. Old that's people's secrets. That's one of the more exciting secrets I've heard. Number 106 from 106-year-old Miss Gussie. Mm-hmm. Let's give you this one from some 41, and then we'll find out why Vanessa is getting a medical device for her back. She's afraid that she will develop <laughs> hunchback faster than the rest of us because of her smartphone usage. Well, guess what? It's apparently going to affect us all. She's doing something about it. World-famous K-Rock. Klein Alley Show. 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 Klein Alley Show. K-Rock. Evolution is a bitch. It's K-Rock or Klein Alley Show, and apparently we will evolve or devolve as humans to develop hunches on our backs because of how we are leaned over to look at our phones. We talked about that medical prediction that uh, I think last week is when they first started dropping it upon us to be on the lookout for us to have hunched backs. Yeah. We all talked about it, moved on with our day, forget about most things we talk about on the show. And then we went to Big Bear. We went to Snow Summit, and we hung out with everybody, and um, I was in my hotel room, and so was Vanessa. The next morning, I learned that... You shared a room with Vanessa? No, no, no. She was right down the hall. Oh. (laughs) But the next morning, we were having our free breakfast. 
she said, man, last night I really went down a rabbit hole about hunches. And she said she spent a long period of time going down a rabbit hole and learning about how hunches are a real thing. And, and she's so she was short. convinced that she has one that's developing. She made me feel it. You had to feel her hunch? <laughs> she made me feel her hunch over breakfast. Did it turn you on? Oh, a little bit. Uh, yeah. And the- <laughs> why, are you making, why are you making that sound, Vanessa? And then, and Did you then, feel it under the shirt or over? No, it's just at the base of her neck. Uh, but skin on skin or over the uh, material? I don't remember. It's just the neck, Clyde. It's just the neck. Well, it, <laughs> it starts at the neck, but the hunch, I would imagine, would go to the upper back. She is convinced that she... Well, she said she was walking to the elevator and that you saw yourself in the mirror, right, Vanessa? Yeah, I saw myself, side profile, and I'm like, oh, no. It's starting for me. And well, I'm short. So yeah. imagine if I get a hunch, I'm going to be in the ground when I'm old. Yeah, because think about it. Vanessa is only five, uh, four something, right? What are you're you, four, right, four? Five. No, you're no, right, you, you know, I heard you say... <laughs> no, your measurement officially is under five feet, correct? Yes, 4'11". She's 4'11". And so if she hunches... She's done. She's done. She I gets know. stepped on. She's little people, big world territory. So, <laughs> Vanessa, um, now you, and you're on your phone all the time, obviously, because you're constantly dating, swiping, swiping, dating. Yeah, no, but we're all on our phones all the time. But even at breakfast, she was showing me the new way that she's going to be holding her phone. And she's like super upright and holding her oh, phone. Oh, that's why you're doing like... that? Oh, I saw her doing that. I thought she was doing some sort of a weird selfie she was taking. That's yeah. how you hold your phone all the time now? To uh, try well, to I'm reverse the try hump? I'm going to be conscious about it because actually we should all be conscious about it. Uh, but Allie said that you've been looking into the concept of buying your own uh, back brace. And I bought one. Oh, you already got it? Yeah, it's, it's almost here, isn't it? Yeah. So you're going to be wearing a, a daily back brace? <laughs> Just like at home. Like a corset? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it was like a sports bra type of deal. And I'm like, this seems like it could be comfortable. So it's a sports bra that's also a back brace? Yeah, I don't know. It like has strings. Strings? I you, don't know. Did you buy this from Timu? No, Amazon. I read the reviews. And, and it's supposed to keep you from hunching when you look at your phone? Yeah, it's supposed to help your posture. And it's Where do the strings go? Headaches. Where do those come into play? I don't know. When I get it, I'll send a picture. <laughs> Uh-huh. Well, you're going to be wearing it at work, right? Because that's where you hunch is over your desk, too. Maybe. Uh, on the text line, guy says, I'm an amateur chiropractor. I would happily feel Vanessa's hump. <laughs> I'm okay. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's funny that you've. this is something that has really hit you more well, than it's other because things. because I'm short. And I, I've seen sometimes when I'm out in the world and I see someone that has a bad hunchback, I'm like, dude, mm-hmm. are you in pain? And also, like, that sucks. Yeah, I know. That is sad well, to but, think about. But like we talked about last week when we brought up this hump issue, we're, if we all get them, then we're all just going to... It's, it's Yeah, gonna you'll be, be hot again because all of us will have them. Yeah, you'll just be there first. We're yeah. all going to We're all going to hunch eventually. Nah, I don't want to follow that trend. <laughs> you sure about that? Yeah. How much did you spend on this back brace? It was it was good. It was like fifteen dollars. So I don't know how that good can't it's be a real be. back brace if it's fifteen dollars. It was fifteen dollars, Ali. I no. thought you'd be happy. El cheapo price. Uh, well, I think if you're gonna go real back brace, you got to do those ones that are like have a metal strip along the back. You know, that was back that like in the lock day, your Ali. jaw into place. Hey Vanessa, I don't want you to freak out because there's a woman right now that claims she uh, also hunches and she's totally cool about it. Go ahead, traveling. So there you go. You have that to look forward to. That could be you. One hundred six point seven K R Q K Rock Klein Ellie Show. All right, let's get someone else into that Green Day show tonight. Here's your question. We've been doing this all show long. Green Day announced a little private, intimate show happening tonight. House of Blues Anaheim. And we've been getting you in every hour all morning long with the American Idiot Test. Don't want to be an American Idiot. And we have one question. The answer was provided at some point this last hour on the airwaves of K-Rock. First one through with the right answer to this question will get themselves tickets to the show tonight. Allie, what is the question? The question is, how did Klein get scammed this time? He told us about a scam. Not not a fair question. And he fell victim to last night. What was the scam? Not a victim. Don't victim shame. (laughs) You're victim shaming. First one through. Don't feel sorry for him, but tell us what it is. First one through with the right answer. You'll be seeing Green Day tonight. Then we got some takeaways to get to. We'll wrap it up. Nicole Avros will be here 40 minutes nonstop. K-Rock, 90s at noon. Yesterday, she made the announcement about this Green Day thing, and just like that, it's already here. And I love that. 
I have a very hard time. I don't, my self-restraint, as you learned earlier today when I ate that whole ice cream cake, I don't have good self-restraint. So the idea of waiting something and having to wait around months to experience it, very difficult. Mm -hmm. I like knowing. It was like yesterday. Uh, Lakers game tonight, you want to go? Great, I'm in. No time to think. Yeah. If that had been you want to go to Lakers game in a week, I would have said, I probably can't do it. No, even when we tell you things that are happening in a couple of months, I can tell in your brain, you look at us like, why are you even telling me this? I'm not going to remember, and I'm not going to put it in my calendar, or remember that I put it in my calendar. Miguel? Yes, this is him. You are the first one through. If you have the right answer to the question that Allie just asked a second ago, you will be seeing Green Day tonight. Once again, Allie, the question, the answer was given at some point this last hour on ra- on the radio. It is how did Klein get scammed? Okay, you gave him $5 to the wrong guy for your hot dog. There you go! I did give $5 to a man that was holding tongs. <laughs> that is true. He apparently nice. was not the same guy that made me the hot dog that I bit and had to give another $10 to. <laughs> so, yes, if you want to say I got scammed by a stranger with tongs, yes, I did. We will because that's exactly what happened. Miguel, enjoy Green Day tonight. You're as good as in. Thank you, guys. Sweet divots. Sweet divots. Sweet divots. Enjoy the show, and thank you for listening to K-Rock. Man, when I hear that from another person, it makes it sound really sad. <laughs> uh, like, when I told it, I didn't realize how sad that sounded. Yeah, when you tell us it's sad, but when someone repeats it back to you, you realize how truly sad it is. Takeaways from today's show, what do we got? 424, my takeaway is if it's windy, of course, it's going to chime. It's a great takeaway. If it's windy, it's going to chime. You know that. Of course, it's going to chime. 818, my takeaway is Florida is the dong state. Mm-hmm. 562, my takeaway is four hours on a juice cleanse is plenty for an ice cream cake. Yep, I agree. 562, my takeaway is Allie is no sugar waster. No, she is not. <laughs> and 818, my takeaway is Green Day is the greatest trio since Snap, Crackle, Pop. Okay, great. It's true. We don't need to Said listen. by great men. What a great <laughs> factoid. What a great quote, uh, that is. Right. Uh, what is Green it? Day may be the greatest trio since Snap, Crackle, Pop. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Can you think of one other trio? I'm just curious. I'll get back to you tomorrow. <laughs> I'll think about that. Uh, Allie, got a takeaway? My takeaway. Oh, I got it. I got it. Your chins. Hey! That's my. The oh, the greatest trio? trio? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's fair. That tracks. <laughs> 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 um, my takeaway is I can't wait to buy a ticket to the Path of Totality Toyota. Oh, man. Just add the word Path of Totality to any mode of transportation, and you could upcharge suckers. Yep. You better believe I'll buy it. Path of Totality, Bacon Wrapped Hot Dog, I'm in. <laughs> Jake, the nerd, you got a takeaway? Yeah, the real saddest meal is peanut butter and birdseed. Oh, yeah. Peanut butter and birdseed is sad unless you're a skunk. And if you want to go to uh, our socials at Klein Alley Show, you can see the entire bracket for March Sadness. All meals that were sent to us by listeners. And you can which, vote. which one will be the saddest of the meals? Uh, Omar Khan, final takeaway. What do we got? I have a couple of takeaways. Uh, the first one is that wind chimes smell like farts. And the second one is that this is what Allie thinks oh, wind no. chimes sound like. <laughs> that is that is her best impression since Benny Hanna. Let, let me let me let, hold on. Let me hear it again. This is Allie's impression of wind chimes. If you missed it earlier, go ahead. Here, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, audio cyber. <laughs> <Beep-beep>. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jake, for Omar, that you up. crushed yeah. it yet again. <laughs> Omar, good job, buddy. <laughs> I, I can't wait. That was tangled up wind chimes. <laughs> I can't wait. My regular wind chimes are, you know, I know. To please. use that sound. Hold on, because I got this one. <laughs> Is that better than this one? Oh, that's oh, that's her impression. <laughs> I should make an album. Yeah. <laughs> Scott Springer, thank you for 40 years of hard work. Allie has a very special message for you to thank you for all of the efforts you put into uh, keeping this place afloat. Go ahead and play the message. That's for you, Scott Springer. Have a great rest of your day. Like- famous K-Rock. Klein Alley Show. Klein Alley Show. K-Rock.